Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Kona. Now this was developed by Parable, published by Raven's Court and is usually available for £11.99 slash $14.99 but it's included with the Xbox Game Pass so hit that batter up or something. So we play as Carl Faubert. Yes, I have already covered a Carl Faubert guide for Kona 2 Broom. Lol. But this time we are investigating some eerie things happening in northern Canada, more specifically, Atamapec Lake. Now as for achievements, there's a whole lot going on. So basically, we're going to need to find 19 campfires, find 16 houses and cabins and enter in all of them. We cannot drink, we cannot smoke, we cannot shoot a weapon. Um, we've got to find all the evidence, find 15 opportunities for specific things. We've got to read all 49 documents, find three chessboards and six talismans, plus story and a few easy miscellaneous achievements as well. So yeah, there's a whole lot going on. Oh yeah, and we need to play a second playthrough as we need to finish at least one playthrough without driving in a vehicle. <laughs> That's nice. So all in all, it's a great game and it's short enough where we can get everything done in as little as four hours. So with that being said then, let's do it. Now, what you are probably aware of is my voice is a little <coughs> as it were. So this playthrough is going to be not as brilliant with the commentary and it's going to be sort of as a bit less with commentary. Um, <laughs> my throat is rather constricting the <laughs> whole of my voice box right now so yes it's got I, I just want to get this one up um, but I will be back in with rather important details of course as we're trying to nip around uh, so but for now just enjoy the scenery of 1970s northern Canada but that's how it had always been the client pays Carl gets it done They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. When the roads were bad, muddy, or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them so yes, it's definitely worth getting used to the driving and the button prompt as well. So obviously right trigger to drive, but as we get out to the rest stop here, turn to your left, you're going to see these two bins. We're going to open up the one bin lid and we're going to pick up the empty bottle, which will come in handy a lot later on. Uh, keep going ahead and you're going to find this tower. We're going to head up the tower and find a couple of items that we're going to pick up. Again, it is going to be a game where we're going to be picking up, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of um, items. So here's the first one, the pincers, which we will have for a couple of times throughout the game, and a, f a couple of fire starters. Now, obviously at the minute you can tell it's not very snowy, um, but it will be very snowy in just a bit. So uh, and we're gonna need to stay warm. So we need to find as many of these fire starters as possible. Now, in turn, there's a couple of things we're gonna basically head back to the car here, back past the car, and we're going to go to the front. You don't have to get this, nothing of note in here. There's just a map um, and a flyer, but it doesn't count um, as anything towards the documents or anything, so you don't actually need to worry about that. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and interact with the lock here, so we can break the lock. Now, what you'd normally think. Uh, you probably think it's the Y button to get into the car, but no, the Y button is to bring up the uh, sort of inventory. It's the B button to get in and out of things and interact with, plus the A button. And we're going to get an achievement as well. So just to the left, you can find this uh, little rock. We're going to inspect the rock. We're going to put some money under that rock, and that's going to get us this. Sorry, A, eh? because Canadians, as we all know, are the nicest people on Earth. It's just a fact. Apart from the couple that aren't, but you know, apart from that. So yeah, if you press the Y button, you get that little menu pop up. So it's the B button to get in, 
and then obviously the right trigger to drive, left trigger to slow down, and all of that jazz magoni. So for now, just continue heading straight until the cutscene begins where we crash and stuff. The affluent man, some sort of wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others, an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those men hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses, but the last straw was the reopening of a mine, which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man Carl needed to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. Well, my brother, that didn't go very well, did it now? <laughs> Right, so immediately take turn directly around the whole uh, 180 or whatever it is, sorry. Have a look at the car that the other car that crashed. Open up and then press the A button to grab the medi kit or the first aid kit. Go into the passenger side door. Now, uh, now these do count towards the documents and evidence that we need to grab. So the first one is on the seat right there. And then if we open up the glove compartment, um, pick up the picture. Now, very, very important. With any pictures and documents that you pick up, make sure to press right or left on the left stick in order to look at the next page or the next um, photo or whatever it is. Um, now, the reason you do that is because you need to read every single page in every document. So, head to the right from the car. We're going to head down and we're into South Atamipec. Um, now... What I like to do here is grab basically a whole bunch of logs. There's a bunch of logs to our left. So I always like to grab as many as we can carry, which is normally about five. Uh, but we can put them into the cars later on, which we will be doing. So go straight into the building here in front of you. This, I believe, is going to be house slash cabin number one, I believe. Um, but I'm not too sure. Uh, but it is story related anyway. So we're going to pick up a whole bunch of items here. The lock chain, which we need. Um, the couple of items here. Always pick up matches and fire starters, as we always will. And here, we will find a whole bunch of um, log steamy boys. Um, again, if it's inside a building, it doesn't count as towards the campfires. The campfires we have to go and find outside. So basically, we have to do a whole bunch of exploring. But obviously, once you light up the fire, make sure to stand by it and um, make yourself nice and warm. And in the top left corner, as you can see, you've got your uh, basically your health bar, your fire bar, and the brain. Now, if you get close to wolves or anything scary, that brain meter will go down. And that will effectively mean that you uh, cannot run as fast and as far. So obviously... Normally what you do in the game is have a little smoke and drink a little beer in order to keep yourself happy. But for two achievements, of course, we're not going to be doing that at all. So make sure to not drink anything and not smoke anything at all. So head back to the car, lay the chains, get back in, and then we can just continue on driving. Um, oh, we do. We are going to have to uh, whap out a first aid kit as well um, and get that going. So you're nice and healthy. And now we can continue on. There's only one way to go. Um, and again, as you'll be able to go around the map and everything, you're going to see that the map is kind of big, but kind of small at the same time. It's just something that you'll have to... You'll see for yourself. Um, but yes, this isn't a cutscene. You are going to have to drive yourself. So continue on forward, my friends, until we hit the general store. All right, general...
spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes. The Manistan region was no tourist hub. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. Jean-Luc Bédard had without a doubt been the closest man in the village to William Hamilton, otherwise known as Uncle Willie. The truck was running on fumes. Good thing that the general store was close by. So just coming up to our right is the general store. As we turn to the right in here, we can't go forward anymore. Um, but head into the petrol station. Look at that for parking. It's only because it's done automatically for us as well. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have probably smashed straight into it. But anyway, we've reached the general store. We get an achievement for it. And there's a couple of things we're going to be doing straight away. Now, if you go to the back of the truck, you can see you can deposit and withdraw any items. So it's always worth just depositing a good couple of logs. Always make sure to have at least one or two logs on you. Get rid of the cigarettes because we don't want to be smoking any of them by mistake. And the empty bottle. Um, we don't need that just yet, um, but it should be fine. If we head into the door, we're going to get a cutscene, but we are also going to get the first, uh, we're going to get the photographer achievement. So press down on your D-pad and press uh, the left trigger to zoom. Now, very, very important. This is another important thing to note. When you take a picture of something specific that we need to take, as long as it says in the bottom right hand corner there, A to keep picture, it means that you've done it right. If it says... If you get another option to throw it away, it means that you've taken the picture wrong and then it does not count towards uh, any document or any um, of the paparazzi achievements. So anytime you take a picture, specific ones that we need to take, make sure that it only has the option to keep the picture and that is that. So just to keep that one in mind. So you've covered up his face um, and you've taken the document. Now we are going to head around and to the back, the sort of uh, back right hand corner, pick up these three fire starters and then uh, head to the back of the room here and interact with a note on the desk. This is another document, just the cash register instructions. And that should be it. The flyer doesn't count at the back there. So head back towards the front of the store, but go to the right. Uh, so basically behind the till, the power's going to go off, and ah, oh, that's an unexpected shame. Press the left bump, uh, lefty on your D-pad to get your flash, your uh, flashy flash flash out, your flashlight. Interact with your third drawer in order to get the documents and some matches, uh, duct tape and some matches. The next drawer over to that, so the fourth drawer, I believe, I think I just said that, will have the customer credit document, which we can grab. Um, so, yes, so you would have got paparazzi 1 out of 15 for photographing Hamilton. And, of course, we're in the first out of 16 houses as well. So the next, the last drawer over has the garage key. And then if you turn around, interact with the ladder, and then we can grab the first aid kit right here. Again, they're going to come in handy uh, just because the wolves are basically the only enemy in the game. Uh, climb back up the ladder into the same spot, and we're going to find a sherry bottle. Again... Uh, this is going to come very handy for uh, a, a basically story-related progression later on, but for an achievement as well. So if we head all the way over to the right, we can next to the phone is going to be another document, the note from Gilles. Gilles, the best a man can get. Oh, wait, no, wait, I didn't mean to say it like that. Uh, anyway, open up the cash register. Now you can just pick any two buttons and then click sale. Because I still have the mentality of a 12 year old I went with 69 and then pressed sale I, uh, I again I have the brain of a 12 year old and a 34 year old body um, and because we're nice we're not going to be stealing any money we're just going to be grabbing the key so job done no money for us unfortunately even though we could have got with our tenor back uh, from earlier but anyway it doesn't matter so head again to the back of the store and if we have a look on the left, we've got the main breakers here. So we're going to turn the switch over to Gen to get the electricity to the generator. And then have a look at the main breaker there to the left. Now what we need to do is turn the top one off so that it is over to the left. So the switch is over to the left, which is the main store. And the bottom one to the right, which is going to be the garage. Because that's where we're going to be heading 
next. So once you've done that, open up the door, head outside. Couple of wolves there, but they will nobble off, so that's good. Um, but continue straight forward to where the wolves were. Interact with the bin in open order to open it up. And there's another document here, the torn paper. Let it be known, you're nothing more than a brigand, etc., etc. Right, whip out your camera. If we turn around, you can see this uh, big bit of ice. Very cute little ice form right here. So, oh, up is to get your um, notes and everything out. But interact, uh, press down on the D-pad, get your camera out, take a picture. And again, as long as it says A to keep the peach, uh, picture and not B to throw it away, it means that is counted. And that is paparazzi 2 out of 15. So turn directly around. And you're going to see this little log fire that we can start a fire. Again, you'll always have to have matches, a log, and a some f a fire starter, which is why we always keep two or three logs on us. Um, or five, you know, because why the hell not? Um, so, but again, that doesn't count as one of the campfires, so don't worry about that one. So what we do here, we're just going to go to the back of the truck, and we're going to deposit... Um, we're going to get at least 30, around 30 to 35 logs into the truck. Again, that will just come in handy for us a lot later on. Um, I just get rid of the sherry as well because we don't want to accidentally drink the sherry. Um, you can get over encumbered, by the way. So it's always worth just popping things in that we don't think we'll need, such as the duct tape and everything. Um, but if, if we do end up getting to a point where we need it, our truck will always be nearby. So do near worry. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do then is just keep heading and we're going to grab, again, around 30 to 35 logs. Um, it's always best to do this now so that you're not sort of chasing your tails a little bit later on and you've always got those spares. So just keep going back and forth for now and doing that. Okay, once you feel you've got enough logs, if you've got 30 to 35, that should be absolutely plenty. We can head back towards it, but this time take a right to go into the garage. Left on the D-pad again to get your flashlight out. And then if we head, uh, look on the left, one of these drawers, I think it is the second one, has got some hardware bits. Again, they'll come in handy. The third one has some pliers. And the fifth one, or is it the... No, that's it. That's all we need from there. Sorry, that's all good. So we can head back out of the garage door. Um, but it does pull, so you know, you'll know you have to get out of the way, of course. Uh, head to the right. So we go in. Uh, again, I always like to keep a couple of logs on me anyway. Uh, so <laughs> it is always worth doing. It is always worth noting as well. It's definitely worth noting that with the campfires, you don't have to light them. Just be near them for it to count. Head over to the generator here next to the main store. Fix it, which you should have the supplies. Turn the key. And then the generator should turn on lovely jabbly. Um, if for whatever reason you don't have uh, everything that you need, you might have accidentally just um, put them in your truck. So go to your truck and see if you accidentally um, uh, deposited them, which I've done a couple of times throughout the game. Turn on the light, head over and activate the lift next to the window. And with that, we can go ahead and grab the calling Dr. Crowbar. Calling Dr. Payne. Because, of course, crowbars equals pains, especially to a world's noggin in the not-too-distant future. So, if you, you can get out your map by pressing right on the D-pad. And if then if you look down with the right stick, you can uh, sort of see uh, where it is that you can and are needing to go. But if you unlock the bottom of this, um, just next to the main door, you can get the main key. Plus the Moida weapon as well. They didn't hide the Moida weapon very good, did they? Anyway, with that key, that's going to open up the lockbox, which will get out the letter from Lewis Hamilton. Oh, Abu Dhabi 2021. Wah! Oh, uh, sorry, I'm literally lighting up a fuse with that one right there, aren't I? Formula One style? Anyway, head to the back of the store again, and then open up the um, breaker or the fuse box or whatever. We're going to turn off. The garage one, and we're going to turn on the top main store so we get some light in here. Uh, before heading out, go to the right and head. Uh, we need to uh, turn on the second pump. So back behind the till, and we need to turn on the second pump in order to get some gas for our grassy ass. 
Now, again, probably for the uh, for the first hour, I will be talking, um, obviously, because th there's just a few things that we need to be discussing and um, just trying to help you through. Um, but once we do have a bit of a grip on the game, uh, thanks to my throat and its absolute diaricity, uh, that is a word, apparently, um, I will not be talking as much, I'm afraid. And I know people were looking forward to my terrible corny jokes. They will still pop in, but still. Right, heading away from the main store, go straight up to this fence, and you can jump with the right bumper, by the way, in case you were wondering, and there's this gap in here. Now, if you look on the floor, as we go past this ice form, there are wolf tracks. Now, a lot of the time, we can follow these wolf tracks to campfires, etc. Um, so, again, just keep looking down, uh, go past this next ice form, and then if we have a look, don't go up to this ice figure just yet. Get out your camera and take a picture. Again, as long as it says you have the one option only to keep the picture, press the A button. It means that you've done it correctly, and that is Paparazzi 3 out of 15. And now we can go ahead and go straight up to the ice figure, interact with it, and we will get sucked in to a memory. We're not even getting sucked off in the memory. We're just getting sucked into the memory. Now, this is basically the main story of the game, so um, what you need to do is just basically follow the footsteps and follow the visions as they go on, interacting with any documents on the way. Again, you, you again make sure to interact with each page as well by flicking the left stick, left or right. Um, but there are four of the vis these visions in the main game that we have to do, and these are the story-related ones. Picking up the, the necklace, again... You can't miss any of these, so don't worry about that. So it is just a case of following the footsteps and following the visions. Very easy, though. had that feeling you get when you immerse your frozen hand. So once you pick up the wallet, we know that this guy who is unluckily frozen is Gilles Lachance. And we get the last stand achievement as well for completing his vision. So, turn directly away from the car. Again, spin directly around and head. Uh, keep looking with the left hand side, with the fence on your left hand side. Um, go, and if we turn to the right where this little ice structure is, and again, we will be following the um, wolf tracks. Again, you can click in the left stick to run for about four seconds before old Carl gets a little bit knackered here. Uh, take a left at this next ice little formation on the floor there. And then you can see this big rock pile directly in front of us. And this is where the first campfire is. So again, you don't have to light it up if you don't have a fire starter or anything. Don't panic. Um, because as long as you just uh, get, get near it, that means that the campfire will count. But that is the first out of 19. And again, now that document there, we have already read because we read it in the vision. So don't worry about that. So there you go. If you press right on the D-pad to get out your map, you can press the left trigger to have a look directly at it. And if we turn directly around from the campfire, again, basically following your footsteps back um, and taking a little right. So we're following the wolf's uh, tracks this time. Heading back basically now towards the main store. Or the general store, sorry, whatever it is. Main store, general store, kumbaya, whatever. That is what we're going to be doing. We're heading back towards the truck. Going back past the truck. And getting into the truck. So, yeah. So, what we're we going to do, we're actually going to turn it around. So, basically... Uh, I'm trying to sort of spin it straight around. We can't go to the left on the main road here because, of course, the tree is in the way, which is just... It's literally the slightest, minorest of inconveniences, but it is a bit of a pain. Um, so head back towards the other way. Now, what you'll see me doing as well is I will be... Wherever we get, whenever we get to a new, loca uh, new location, I will get out the map just so you can see where exactly we are on the map. So if you do whatever for, re uh, for whatever reason get lost, um, just look at the map that I put on on the game, and obviously you can just follow it along from there, hopefully as well. 
So heading up the road, again, this is the road that we came down earlier. And just on your left, you can see a mailbox sticking out. Now, this is Gilles Le Changer's house. Um, so get out. Don't head up to the left first. Get out, and we need to interact with the mailbox because there is a readable document in here. And again, just to show you where we are on the map, there we are. So there she blows then another letter for Gillette, the best a man can get. Gillies, the best a man can testicles. Or something or other. So get back in the car. Again, head directly left because we need to be going up towards Gilles Lechance's house. It's going to be house slash cabin number two. And there is, as we just, uh, just chill it out here, there is also going to be a crossbow bolt. Now, there are six of these crossbow bolts. And these actually count towards the paparazzi achievement as well. So, again, for the paparazzi achievement, there are 15 specific photos that we need. And that includes the six crossbow bolts. So, here is the first one sticking out. So, again, down to the D-pad, get your camera out. And, again, make sure that it's you only get the one option to keep the picture. Again, and I'll say it for the last time, if you get another option that says throw away the picture, it means that you didn't do it correctly. So... Just be wary of that one. So once we've got that, head up towards the house. Uh, again, there's a couple of logs there if you want to pick one or two up. Completely up to you, of course. Uh, but again, as long as you've got one or two on you at all times. And we can head straight in. Now, there is Ice Lady here. So we are going to need to be very careful. But if we turn to the left, or the right, sorry, turn on the light. And head over to the opposite side of the room. And we can actually light a fire. Start a fire. Isn't there like a million pop songs with Real light my fire Give me, me my only desire Anyway, opening up the cupboards to find a fire starter Again, we'll be finding as many fire starters as we can Heading over to the right hand side Over next to the fridge uh, There is a stake which will come in incredible handy To get rid of some of the wolves a little bit later on And then go into the next room here Pick up the next newspaper Sorry, that was a terrible French-English uh, effort right there. Um, but anyway, that is that counts as a document. So again, get out your camera, take a picture of the ice lady, and make sure that that snaps lovely, and you've got the keep picture option. And then we can go ahead and do her, um, her next vision. Uh, now, there won't be any commentary for this bit. Again, you'll just uh, follow along with the video. Sorry, my throat's about to hurt. Sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Something was hidden under the stairs. The man grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. Perhaps their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. Okay, so hopefully, even without my voice, it, it, these are still easy to uh, follow along with. But once we pick up the diary make sure to change the pages there may not always be a change of page but always just make sure that you are at least trying there are only two pages to look at with jizzle's diary um plus obviously we got the achievement there for uh the frosty relationship there it is if it eventually pops uh, head directly to your left anyway and we can get a couple of painkillers uh it always comes in handy because this place is a pain in my frosty nut nutter butters um, and if we head, we're not done with the house yet, we need to go back into the same room, we found the newspaper, open up the safe, and the safe number will always be the same, it is going to be B, and if we go over to the right there, it's 736, uh, 739, sorry, 739, not 736, I've got, I've got them mixed up there, so B739, it's always the same, and inside has another one of those delicious compromising documents. 
Mmm, delishimoso. Mmm. Okay, right. So now we've got... Kind of looks like an angel there with the curtains. You know, big... Although Knuckles the Echidna springs to mind also as well. But once we're done in this house, we can get out of this house now. And we're actually going to start finding some treasure maps. So head around to the back of the house. And what you're going to find is a magnet. Uh, just on this sticky magnety boy. And then continue heading around. So we are into this little fenced area. Um, back to the... Well, effectively now back to the front of the house. But yes, uh, included, I believe, in the documents are 10 treasure maps that we need to find as well. So uh, I forgot to say it in the intro, but they do count, um, I believe, towards the documents anyway. So getting back into our car. And then we are going to take a little drive. So continue basically going straight forward. And then right at the end of the road, take a right, make sure to take a right, and then we're going to stop next to this left-hand side mailbox. So make sure here to stop, get out of your car, and then obviously we're going to interact with said mailbox once again. I'll just show you where we are on the map. We're right by the Bedar house right now. So obviously this is going to be the next house and cabin, th uh, 3 out of 19. But this is where the first treasure map is as well. So that's treasure map 1 out of 10. Now, uh, and obviously have a look at the letter as well for another document. Now, it's treasure map 1 out of 10 for us. But they are the... You, what you'll find is they are numbered in different orders. So don't worry if I said it's like number 1 and it was like number 8 then. It's obviously number 1 for us, so don't panic. So head straight down anyway, of course, we're going to be heading into the Bedard. Or Bedard house. Bedard's house. Plus, there's a cheeky shed that we're going to be having a look at and stealing some things. I say stealing, of course. We're still nice, even though there's literally nobody about. So, first of all, we're going to head into the shed slash garage. And if we go down and to the right... You can see an empty gas can. We're going to need one of those. Um, we don't need to inspect the floor. But we are going to grab the hammer off the tool uh, the tool bit right there. We can turn on the lantern as well in order to get some light. And if we have a look in the left-hand side drawer, we're going to get some more hardware. And the fourth, fifth, uh, was it the sixth one? Yes, the sixth one, very importantly, has some matches and a key for us. So, uh, there are there is some beer and some cigarettes as well. If you pick them up, don't worry, you can just deposit them back into the truck. Again, just make sure not to smoke or drink them. So, once you've grabbed the key, head to the left. Once we get outside, we're going to head into the house. But we need to move the carpet. <clears throat> Again, excuse me. That's a very good point, narrator. That is a very, very good point. Everyone hides this key in the same place. You might as well just leave it open and invite every burglar in. So, uh, let's have a look into the fridge, because why not? We're a bit peckish. Um, we are going to grab another steak. Now, if it comes to the point where your inventory is full, um, you don't actually have to go out to the truck in order to deposit your stuff. Um, you can if you do want to keep some stuff, um, but you can actually just press Y to go into your inventory, and you can actually then just press the X button, I believe, in order to just drop off a few things. Now that's that's if you don't want to having to keep coming out to the track all of the time. Uh, but we'll get rid of a few things that we don't need for now. Uh, you know, we don't need four logs on us for the time being. We don't need the hardware. Don't need the pliers. Um, um, again, get rid of a couple of logs because they do take up quite a bit of uh, space in your inventory. Um, and like duct tape and things like that we don't need for the time being. I will let you know when we do need it though. So heading back into the house, we'll try that one again. Look, so whack open the old steak and magonies. Ooh, two steaks, yummy. Uh, just underneath the phone there, we're going to grab some 10 Polaroid films. Um, and we can attach the wire. Now this is important to be grabbing some talismans later on for another achievement. So make sure you've attached the wire. Um, head over to the uh, where the TV is. And we can... Oh, did I forget one thing? I think I did in one of these drawers, which is it next to the sink. Very important there to get some fire starters next to the sink. 
Um, again, you don't have to light the fire if you don't want. But again, another important note is these fires do stay lit. So if you're finding yourself in a situation where you are freezing to death, you can come to one of these houses um, and then uh, just warm up a little bit. Head into the left-hand side bedroom all the way at the end. Open up the drawer. You can turn on the lamp if you want. Doesn't make a difference, but it is Marie's diary. And again, make sure to try and flip the pages if you can. Uh, there are three uh, pages for Marie's diary. And then from here, there's nothing else in this room. Head to the room opposite. And again, uh, go straight forward. Open up the drawer. The desk drawer for another document. Uh, this one's going to be Sylvie's diary. And again, there's going to be another couple of pages. So make sure, as always, to keep flipping said pages. But that'll be it for this one. So we can head to the left. There's nothing of note in the other room. So we'll head straight for the door in front of us. Basically heading out of the back way now. And we're going to start looking for our next treasure map. So from that door, head to the left. And you can see where the car is parked up. Um, in fact, we're just going to deposit... Um, oh, in fact, no. We are going to... What we're going to grab is... We're going to grab another couple of logs. Uh, because there are a couple of campfires we're going to be grabbing on the way. So make sure that you are stocked up with a couple of logs. And head back towards the back of the house. And then, from here, what we can do... We'll go straight ahead. You see the barrel of logs there on our right. So head slightly to the left... Head towards the fence. Now, it can be a little bit tricky, but always I'll always try and uh, let you know um, and always have a look at the sort of environment around us so that we're going in the same direction. Now, the treasure maps will always be underneath these two crossed trees. So every time you see these crossed trees, it means that you are in the right place. Again, always I will show you where we are on the map as well, just next to the B in Beddal. Um, but again, every time we come to two cross trees, this is where the next treasure map will be. So there we go. That's a job. Uh, that's number nine, but number two for us in order. So just turn around and continue heading straight down. Again, basically following your footprints. We're going to be getting the next campfire. Um, so directly in front of us there, you can see... The, foot, uh, the wolf tracks, so that's what we're looking for. So the wolf tracks, head to the left, follow the, following the wolf tracks. And we are going to be getting the next campfire, I believe. And again, remember, Carl runs like an absolute nuisance because he barely runs at all. Continuing to follow the wolf tracks. Again, may be a little bit tricky to see in these, but if we head slightly to the right, there we are. And there we go. There is the next campfire. And again, like I said, as long as you get near it, there it is on the map, it will be marked up on the map. You don't have to light it. So if you don't have a fire starter or a log, do not panic because chances are we would have, you would have started a fire in one of the previous houses or anything. So if you're freezing, quickly knit back to the house or something. Uh, but don't worry if you don't have it the same as me. Turn slightly to the right. Continue, fo uh, continue to follow the wolf tracks and we're going for the next treasure map uh, so continue on following along following along and then what we're going to do we are going to look ever slightly to the right you could probably see the two cross trees to your right there they are so again head towards that and grab the next treasure map And we're going to be going for campfire number three, I believe, now after 19. So, uh, follow your footsteps and then see the wolf tracks. Go to the right of those wolf tracks. Again, we are going to be continuing to follow them. So, just keep having a look at the floor. And then eventually we will reach the next campfire. It's right in front of us there next to the tent.
Normally, with every campfire we find, there's always going to be a bunch of goodies. Um, again, not food or anything, but, you know, some matches, some fire starters, and some hardware and stuff like that. So, there we go. So, um, now again, remember to, if you want to, so if you press right on the D-pad, like I said, look down at the map with the right stick, and then you can actually move your character to see where you're going. But basically, we're heading straight and slightly to the right. Again, basically following our footsteps back now. And there we are then, finally back at Bedard's house. So, uh, we are going to get a little bit of a... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we are going to get a little bit of a warm-up. Uh, so, we're just going to head back in. Um, now, one thing I should mention as well, I, uh, on about the saves, I've, I realise I haven't mentioned the saves. Every time we get near a campfire, or any fire at all, the game will automatically save. But, later on, they did add in manual saves as well. So, if you're in a specific spot... And you don't think you can get to a fire camp or anything. You can't auto-save. You can actually manually save in the game now. So, uh, But what we're going to do now, we're going to head back for treasure map number four. So take a left out of the house again. And then basically continue straight. You can, you, uh, you can see like a big gap in the trees. We're going for the cluster of trees directly in front of us there. Because uh, what you're going to see is the two crossed um, trees, and that is where treasure map number four is. Okay, that is as delicioso as it gets. So, we're going to turn directly around and we're going to start heading back towards Bedell's house and get in our car. So, go ahead, follow your own uh, steps back back towards the house and nip yourself into the car. We're off to Roy's house. So when we get onto the main road, we're going to take a right and then continuing on straight for a while. And Roy's house is just coming up here on the right hand side. So uh, we can, there it is, you can see the mailbox. So whip it out. I, I mean, not whip it out, but get out of your car, sorry. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, um, obviously, have a look again in the mailbox. Uh, just to show you where we are. So, this is Roy's house. Now, uh, if you say it's Roy's house, Roy to me just sounds like um, one of those people in England that says, Oh, we get arrested for just being English these days. You know, those type of gaminated beef heads. Um, but anyway, not all Roys are like that. I know some are nice, but, well, a lot of them are, you know, those. Well, I might get arrested for being English. Oh, my God. So, anyway, once you grab the document, head to the right once we get back into the car. And, oh, my God, Roy's house just popped out of nowhere, so I crashed straight into it. Slicey dicey. Well done. Top driving, as always, from Mwago. So, out we get. Yes, this is Roy's house, so it's going to be house slash cabin four. 
out of 16. Um, but before heading in uh, to the right, there is a bin that we can interact with. I do believe it has another empty bottle. Um, so we can pick this one up if you so wish. One is all we're going to need. So if we pick the one up from the beginning of the game, uh, you don't need this one really, but it's always worth picking it up. Interact with the note on the door. It's a known from a uh, note from Gene Roy. Gianni. And then we can just open the door and let ourselves in. Turn to the, well, take a left. You can see the light right there. And we're going to head straight for the fridge again because we're all starvations, but there's nothing in there. Uh, have a look on the table to find a document, the fantasy. Welcome to the fantasy lounge. There is only one page, so you should be good. So you can pop that on, uh, pop that away. Start the fire if you so choose in order to get you warming up your cockles again. Um, to the opposite side of the room, basically in the kitchen, there are seven matches in the left-hand side drawer. And most importantly here is the first out of three chess boards. So as long as you move the chess board, that will count. So we've got another two to grab. Heading down the hallway here, go into the left-hand side room at the very end, turn on the lamp, and read the next document, the fantasy page four. My fantasy is I wish YouTube would actually pay me um, actual proper money. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can open up the bag to get some ammo if you want. Uh, it's always worth picking up ammo because we are going to shoot something at the very end of the game after we have completed the game. So it's worth grabbing it there if you want. More importantly though, right there next to the picture frame was the fantasy page three. Head straight into the opposite room to grab the fantasy page two. And there we go. So that's everything that is going to be in this room. So we can head out go directly in front of us again pick up another couple of logs or so uh, for the next campfire that we are going to be going for because uh, we're going to be going for campfire four in just a bit um, but are we going to head out the front door yes we are heading out the front as so you can see our truck right there so from our jeep truck whatever it is turn directly around to the left basically out of the rear door as it were and where there's two gaps there's a gap on the left and a gap on the right. That is what we're heading for. That one right there. The one I just squeezed it in. So head str effectively straight, more or less. Um, there is... Are there going to be a wolf right here? I'm not too sure. But anyway, head slightly to the right. And we're going to be heading to the next... You can already see the two dots trees. We're going to be heading for the next treasure map. So yeah, if we just go to this big rock pile right here, you can lift up the rock with the crowbar, and that is where we get our first talisman as well. Um, I, I obviously, if you jump in, uh, make sure to jump out with the right bumper. And I meant by treasure map, I obviously meant campfire and talisman, but now we're going to be going for the next treasure map. So warm your cockles up again by the campfire. Again, making sure you've got the talisman as well. But if we head directly, more or less straight in front of us, um going to take a little painkiller and um, what, what we are going to do though we are going to grab um, a steak and the reason we're going to grab a steak is because there may be some wolves um, <laughs> sorry if apparently I went on a bit of a mental breakdown right here um, but we are going to be getting some steak because there may be some wolves in uh, just around here somewhere. Don't believe. I think it's okay, actually. Uh, but if we head... So, yeah, the wolves are going to be directly on your right. Right in front of us there. So don't go too far. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to basically head to the left. If you get too close to them, they are going to start walking towards you. So sort of move over to the left, but continuing to head straight. You can see now the next treasure map just next to the right hand side of these um, boulders. Now what I was doing, I was looking for the uh, stake, but for some reason I'd accidentally deposited it in my car, which is why I went on a mental breakdown. Um, but anyway, that's the next treasure map right there. That should be five out of 10 already. 
So what we are going to do now is head straight in front of us. Uh, there are a bunch of wolves, like, well, I say a bunch, there's a couple on our left. You can probably just see them right there. They, they, that's where we need to get the next talisman. Um, and again, if you don't have a stake on you, um, chances are you've probably done the same as me and deposited it in the car. Uh, just grab another log here because we are going to use a fire just to the right. There it is. Again, this does not count as a campfire, so don't panic. Um, but it's always worth it as it makes up a, 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 an auto save. Grab some matches as well. Now, I actually, I, off camera, I went back to the car, got some stakes. Uh, hopefully, you didn't deposit it and you do have one. It's in your inventory. Uh, so turn directly around. And then what you're going to do, you're just going to, uh, when the wolves see you, just throw the stake with the right trigger. And they should both then scamper off, even though it looks like one is going to walk towards you. He will eventually bag her off. So you should get the nature lover achievement there for dealing with a wolf without killing him. And then what they were sniffing around, sniffing around were was for the second talisman right there. So that'll be job done. King Jong Un. Okay. So now we're going to be heading for the next campfire and the next campfire is going to be if we turn from the talisman there if we turn slightly to the right through this little gap in the trees over this little mound sort of head down and again you can see Roy's house here on the left anyway but continue to follow the wolf tracks um, yeah so continue to follow the wolf tracks and then we're going to start just heading off to the right. You can see the skinny trees on our right. Start heading towards these trees through to the fence. You can see the fence directly in front of us now. And there should be a gap in the fence. There it is. Um, and now again, what I accidentally did, I accidentally deposited a fire starter as well. So we're back on the main road. Go across the main road and you should see the next campfire. Um, again... What I ended up doing was I ended up off camera going back to the car, getting my fire starter again. Uh, there's a stake in there as well, if you want to grab a stake. And there should be some matches there next to the chair. Um, but yes, so I accidentally deposited my fire starter. So what I did off camera, went back to the car again, got my fire starter, and I lit a uh, fire here. Again, uh, now, I've, now what I will say is make sure that you do light a fire here because what we need to do is basically uh, quit out to the main menu and come back so we can get our car or we can just go ahead and grab our car from Roy's house. Now the reason I say it's probably worth doing it uh, just running back and grabbing our car from Roy's house is because we need to fill up our gas can. Now if we do it the way I'm about to do it by loading the checkpoint which should be zero um we get our car spawned to us, but the prompt for filling the gas can doesn't appear at the um, general store. So um, we have to do it later on at Le Mott's garage. Um, so it's completely up to you. It doesn't matter because we do end up getting a full gas tank eventually anyway. But it's really just a case of if you want to do it now or later. Um, but again, if you're doing the whole loading checkpoint thing right there, chances are very highly likely that you won't be able to fill up your gas tank at the general store, which is where we're going to be heading for right now. So, as you'll be able to see, normally you should get a um, a prompt come up there to say fill gas tank. 
If it doesn't, again, don't panic. We're going to get it later on at Lamotte's garage anyway. Um, and you've always got the empty gas tank on you anyway. So head around um, again to the back. Uh, pick up another couple of log fires here. Because um, what we're going to do is go and find... We're going to find another treasure map. So from the fire, go directly in front of you through the gap in the fence. Continue on straight. And um, now you see this bridge. Don't cross it just yet. Head right. Make sure that the stream is on your left. And then continue the stream all the way to the end. Up the hill here to find the next treasure map. Now we're going to find the third talisman, so again this is where we are, just underneath the A in General Store. Um, but again, we are going to follow the um, stream on our right back down. And you've obviously seen the one bridge, so there's two little makeshift bridges that we can use. We are going to head all the way back down and go to the first one that we encountered. But there are going to be some wolves here, so again, completely up to you this time, you can get out the stake, which is probably worth doing, um, just so it's, it's easier, or you can get out the crowbar, you can attack the wolves, and when you kill one of them, the other one should disappear as well. Um, but basically head straight up, you can see the wolves right there, give the stake a little throw, they will bagger off, and then we will get the, um, the third talisman, giving us the jeweler achievement as well. Um, mm, delicious, but just to the left there of the bin bag tree is the Sally's man. Oh, hello, Sally, Sally, Sally. Oh, God, I'm tired. Oh, it's going to be a long recording session, this one. Yeah. Anyway, that's where we are. So, yeah, job done. Now we are going to go ahead and... Oh, yeah, some of the achievements in this game, by the way, pop rather late. So, yeah, if you pa don't panic, they will uh, eventually pop... Uh, yeah, eventually. So from the talisman, head slightly to the right through these thickets of trickets of bushes, continuing on straight and just nipping through all of these slightly to the left. And you can find the next tent and campfire, the Woodlots campfire. But what's important here is to bring, um, grab the lantern. And there's a reason for that, because we are going to be getting an achievement in just, again, in a tiny little bit. Um, whack out your inventory. And again, whatever we don't need. We really don't need four logs, so you can actually just drop two logs there if you want. Just to go ahead and make some room for the lantern. So go ahead and do that. Obviously, if you want to light the campfire, you can. If not, don't worry. Um... Because there is a fire, there's obviously a fire just over the bridge of the house. But uh, make sure to pick up the matches as well. We should be literally t good for matches. Good for matches. Now we're going to try, oh, we are going to try, we are going to find Treasure Map 7. So, um, from the back of the tent, we are going to, um, what am I looking for? Equipment. We're going to whack out the crowbar because there's going to be a wolf that we need to disperse of. But you're basically following the wolf tracks again until we are able... Again, it's going to basically be straight in, fr more or less in a straight line. Just for the time being, because eventually, well, I say eventually, right about um, just past this tree here. Take a look to the left and you can probably see the two little cross trees just go straight ahead. Again, it might, it, it can be a little bit tricky to see. Um, but yeah, there is the next treasure map as well, so, yep, and obviously what I'm going to do, I'll show you on the map exactly where we are. And again, you may think that this is a bit of overkill, but it is very easy to get lost in this snow. Okay, so, from the treasure map, again, if you look sort of to the left, uh, if you were looking directly at the treasure map, look slightly to the left, um, go straight. We are going to be going for the next talisman now as well. 
So past over the um, our tracks, and you can see what looks like five or six statues in a row right there. Just to the right of that is the next talisman once we lift the rock. And now it is time to head for the next campfire. So jump out of the pit if you get out of it. Um, we're just going to nip straight through these statues. Again, uh, wacky crowbar out. I believe there is going to be a wolf popping up soon. So straight from the couple of statues as we went through them. And again, it's just straight through some of the bushes. Ever so slightly to the right is what we're going to be looking at. Again, very easy to get lost here, which I do apologize uh, but if you go straight, basically, you know, you've got your bushes on your left and right-hand side. Straight in front of us, though, you should be able to see the wolf. Give that a whack of life and get the next campfire done. Carl never thought he would be dancing with the wolf. I am God! Well, I'm not right now, I'm not, but uh, anyway... So we don't have a fire starter, that's fine, the campfire still counts. So, for now, we are going to head back down the way. We're going to head back down towards um, our vehicle by the general store. So, there we go. So, I've finally, <laughs> finally shown you guys, uh, actually, because it took me this long to realize that I could do this with the map. Um, but you're, uh, effectively, you're heading just more or less straight down. Uh, so we're just going to be heading towards the stream. Oh, nice face, bro. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, again, you can follow your footsteps and the wolf tracks down. But effectively, we're going to just try and head straight down until we get back to the general store. Whichever way you do it, you may end up at a different part of the stream. Um, but eventually, we're going to get to the same point because you can't cross the stream without crossing the bridge anyway. Back in the safety of our onlyest vehicle. Okay, so when we get onto the main road, we're going to take a right, and there's going to immediately be a fork. There's one, the right side is going to the bridge, but the left side is where we're going to be going first of all, because we've got a whole bunch of stuff to do on this side of the map before we head to the right. So we're actually going to be getting the next talisman um, oh so soon. We're gonna, so we're going to cross this little bridge, and then when we do cross the bridge... Incredibly bad driving, as always, from me. <laughs> you wouldn't think I'm a delivery driver, would you? Uh, but when we get past this doctor's sign, as you can see here, make sure to stop. We are going to be going up to Dr. Berpe's. Uh, but there is a talisman that's going to be on the right-hand side, just past the fence. So find the gap in the fence here. Jump over it again with the right bumper. Directly to your right is going to be the next talisman in the hole. And that is already going to be five out of six. Oh, 
Oh, just noticed as well. Carl keeps his engine running constantly. Oh, bros, the Eco Warriors will be having a nightmare if they play this game. They would be having bloody blood pre pressure problems and everything, won't they? Anyway, slightly to the left, and we're already at Dr. Burpees. I don't know if it's uh, Dr. Bill Bay or whatever, but um, yes, he was the actual original inventor of the, do of the Burpee squat. Uh, the burpee exercise. Nah, I'm just kidding. Okay, right. When we get in here, make sure that you do have the lantern on you. This is, again, specifically for the achievement. And make sure that you've got a couple of bits on you as well. Oh, Dr. Bupre, sorry. But it looks like Dr. Burpee. So, uh, once we get up to Dr. Burpee's house, we're not going to go in straight away. We're going to open up the letterbox, grab the key. Um, but instead of going in, there's nothing under the map, by the way. Uh, grab a log or two if you so wish, uh, and a fire starter, yay! But we're going to head around to the back of Dr. Burpee's clinic, first of all. And into this bin, we can find some duct tape, which we will need, as always, because you never know when duct, a duct tape emergency will appear. And now we can go into the house. Um, oh, uh, read the document first, sorry. The doctor's note, which is... And that again, narrator boy, that is a very, very good shout. Even though doctors, all they do is go, Oh, what's that? Your leg's fallen off. Massive blood clot. Huge tumour in your gut. Some paracetamol. That'll be, that'll be fine. Yes. So, get your lantern out. Because uh, we're in a dark place. If you get your lantern out, this will unlock the achievement called Cozy Ambience. There is another opportunity to get this later on, though, as well. Uh, but just get this one out of the way. Um, and again... The um, the achievements do take a while to unlock sometimes. So, not only that, this is obviously the next house and cabin. Plus, we're going to get the paparazzi. Uh, 6 out of 15 as well. Uh, so, you can light a fire in here if you wish. Again, no bother if you don't. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the center of the room. We're going to interact with the bed after we interact with the lantern to turn it on. And this is paparazzi 6 out of 15. So you need to take a picture of the doctor's bed. And again, make sure that it says keep picture. And it doesn't have the other option to bin it off. And then once that is done, uh, there's a whole bunch of documents and things we're going to grab here. First of all, make sure to read the medical files. And make sure to read every medical file. So you've got the unknown woman, rosary, Rose, uh, Roser, sorry, not Rosary, Roser, uh, Sylvie Bedard, and the next one, which is going to be there Big no Willy Willy, Uncle Willy Bags, Uncle well. Willy Ham Hams, and then that should be enough, and then interact with the photos to the right. I don't think you can interact with the photos to the right until you read all the medical files, so once you've read all of them, William Joseph, and uh, that should be good, interact with the photos, there's painkillers, there's a document on the bed. So again, make sure to change the pages, because you can see it's the Communist Manifest. And then once you um, change the page, uh, interact with the big drawers here on the left in order to grab another first aid kit. And then you don't have to inspect that, but uh, just over to the left-hand side, just opposite the bed, in one of these drawers, there is going to be, uh, I believe, a fire starter. I think it's going to be on the very left-hand side. Um, it's not in those, it is in the left-hand side one. There it is, a couple of matches, which will always come in mega handy. Uh, oh, and a fire starter as well, just to the right there of the fireplace. So that'll do fair, just fine. Right, so uh, we can head out. We are now done with the Burpee's office, so we're going to head to our car. There was no documents, of course, there. We just managed to grab the key so we are going to head back down to the car and we're going to head to the house of the patriots house which will be uh house slash cabin number six out of 16. so once we get back into the car ah the safetyness the safety dance of the car and um, we'll head back onto the main road and then when we do get back onto the main road we are going to take a left
So we're going to come up to a gap in the left here. There it is. And you can see the gap. That is what we're going to be going through. Continuing heading straight up this gap. And here we are then at El Hausos of El Patrianios. And again, there are just uh, there's going to be a couple of things that we are going to do in the inside, of course, as always. As always, my voice has been a bit weird, hasn't it? For some reason, I'm doing that whole um, stupid annoying thing at the end where I go, as always, here we go. Sorry, I don't know what the hell's wrong with me today. Anyway, heading to the back of the house, make sure to pick up the hatchet. This is going to come in handy for slicing and dicing, and obviously a good couple of logs there as well, if you're so wishing. Always worth keeping two or three on you. Um, you can have a look in the bin to grab another couple of matches. And in the cooler box here on the left, there is a beer bottle. Now, we're only grabbing one, just in case the uh, share. We basically have to make a specific drink in this house. And if the specific drink doesn't work, at least you've got... Uh, if the sherry doesn't work for whatever reason, um, you can always then use it with the beer. Again, you'll get the achievement as long as you don't drink any beer or any water. Thirsty work, huh? So, heading into the house of the Patriot. Look more like a pigsty than a house. Yes, I welcome to my left, bruh. Nah, just joking. Anyway, uh, start the fire again, if you are wishing. Uh, then we're going to turn around. You can have a look uh, on the in the right-hand side, uh, big massive drawers here. As there is a document. Quebec Liberation will happen by first and not at all. We will prevail. Um, on the in the drawer, there is absolutely nothing. But on the bed, there is his wallet. Uh, this is Regine's wallet. Or if you're British, what's happening? Regine. Oh, hey, Regine. Um, have a look on the right-hand side wall. There is another document. It's the caribou traditional recipe. Caribou actually sounds lush. And then if we have a look here. Right at the back of the uh, wall, we can prepare the caribou. We've got an empty bottle. We've got the sherry or the beer. It doesn't matter which. As long as we get the one piece of caribou in our items, in our inventory. Uh, it should be in your... Cons uh, no, it should be in your inventory. Um, but if you need to find uh, anything else, your beer bottle or your sherry, it'll be in your consumables. Uh, so you can actually just bin that beer bottle off now because we're not going to need it now for the rest of the game. And we don't want to accidentally drink one, of course. So, um, again, uh, go ahead and deposit a couple of things here, which we don't need. Obviously, the beer bottle. The flare we don't need. Uh, the ammo that we don't need as well. Um, you can deposit a couple of logs as well. Um, the duct tape. Um, we don't think we need the duct tape. Uh, but I do actually keep it. So, yeah, just in case... Keep the duct tape always worth doing, but that is it for the House of the Patriots. Now, we are actually going to head now towards Rosero's house. So, yeah, nice easy house there that we just uh, got rid of. So, um, obviously, take a right. No, or is it left? No, it's left, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it right? No, it is left. Sorry, I'm just reversing. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, right. No, left. So. <laughs> Oh, God, sorry. I'm just confusing the crap out of everyone now. Huh. Anyway, once we get back to the main road, again, we are going to take a uh, right. Say again, we are just going to take a right. We are going to completely crash into the fence, <laughs> which is obviously not my stupidity in us driving at all. Continue on heading back around and down the main road. There's going to be a gap in the fence to the left. Oh, it's a gap in the fence. It's just going to be a gap we can go down. There it is. And as we head up then, we will finally find Roselle's house, which is, of course, going to be another house for us to go into towards that particular achievement. Um, now, what you're going to find is a guy with a shotgun who is going to shoot at you. So, you know, try not to be too startled. But, uh, yeah, you're just going to have a little bit of a conversation with the only other living being in this game. Whoa, my 
bonhomme. Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retentisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> si tu veux du linge chaud parce que t'es habillé comme un gars de la ville, je dirais pas non à une bonne bouteille de caribou. Puis tu pigeras ce que tu voudras parmi mes guenilles. <rire> so, make sure to... Ah non, this guy's laugh as well cracks me up every time. Uh, so make sure to... Oh, very happy. So once you've traded the caribou, he will give us our coat. Now this is going to come in handy because um, it helps us. It, so the cold meter depletes um, not as fast as it did before. And we can go into the ice caves, which we're going to be going into ever so shortly. Uh, we'll be able to explore that without freezing to death very, very quickly. So that is, yeah, happy with that. So job done. You can put the shotgun down now, though, old angry granddad man. On to the left, you can have a look at the... Uh, oh, you'll get the Winter is Coming achievement as well there. Um, but you can read this book. This is this actually goes towards the documents, the tales and legends. Make sure to read or at least flick over all four pages. And I believe that is the only document. Um, if we have a look to the right-hand side, there is another... Um, oh, we can open up a drawer to grab another couple of matches, but just to... No, that is it. Yeah, we don't need to actually read anything else. Gr make sure to grab the key before we head out of the door as well, and then head straight into a shed to find, again, a couple of items. There is another gas can in here if you uh, need one. There is another hatchet as well if you need a hatchet. Um, and again, there's just a couple of extra goodies in here as well. So in the drawer, there is another uh, couple of ammos to the, the second drawer. In the fifth drawer, there is some hardware, and that's pretty much it. So there we go. Uh, but if we have a look to the right, um, more importantly, we can find a fire starter just in the bin there, just to the left of the shed. Uh, and that, But that's it. Now we can head back to our car. We are done. We are going to deposit a couple more items, hardware, duct tape. Um, again, you can just keep one stake on you as well if you wish, uh, but just saves up, clears up a bit of room in our inventory. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're actually going to head towards Limotte's house. So once we get, once again, back onto the main road, uh, you just seen us. Oh, there it is. Oh, man, more crashing. Jesus Christ, dude. This time, we are going to head to the right, if my driving will allow, which eventually it will. So here we go. We, we headed to the right on the main road, and we're heading towards Lamotte's garage, so continue on straight. So here we are then, until we've managed to get all the way to the end. So first things first, before heading to the left, go straight next to the stop sign, open up the mailbox and grab the document, the letter for La Mothy, or La Motte for French, and then grab the package inside it as well. Now we are actually going to need the pincers, of course, so there's a couple of things we are going to need here. Make sure to grab the pincers so we can actually open up the way. Uh, grab the hammer, grab um, at least, I believe, um, one hardware and one duct tape as well. So yeah, at least one hardware, one duct tape. Make sure to grab the um, pincers as well because we are going to need, again, I get rid of... Uh, oh, it's obviously the, the spark plug we're going to need as well, so make sure that is still in your inventory.
So yes, eventually I would get there. So uh, apologies about that there. It was a bit back and forth. Picking up one thing and then forgetting the other thing. So yeah, job done. Okay, right. Let's just head straight in. And again, this is where the next main story mission is. And we got quite a few things to do here. So first of all, head straight into Lamotte's garage. Open it up. Get your camera out and make sure to take a picture of Iceman, which will be Lamotte. Um, but it will be Paparazzi 7 out of 15. And then we're going to go ahead and do his very short vision. To his cabin. But from what? Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort. To ah, I told you it was pretty short. It was a lot shorter, wasn't it? Right, so a couple of items that we can grab in here. First of all, then, have a look on the fridge, uh, just to the right of where Lamotte is standing. Uh, this is the note to self. It's the, uh, basically the spark plug. We've got the spark plug now. Uh, you can open it up to find some hardware. And then give it a close if you so wish. Head to the... Uh, back end of it, uh, pick up this magazine on the floor. I don't know if this counts as a document, but it's always worth just, uh, I've picked it up just in case. And then um, that will be that. We will come back and grab an achievement for fixing the spaceship in just a little while. So for now, uh, we can head to the right into Lamotte's place. Now, um... We actually do need to take a picture. This isn't for the paparazzi achievement, but this is for the collecting all evidence. So um, I did take one or two pictures. I do believe this counts as um, the evidence. So that's why we're taking the picture. Three solid ones, apparently. So finally, we've taken enough pictures apparently, open up the fridge to grab the next painkiller. And then if we go to the left and head down this little sort of moundy hill next to these big massive logs, we can interact with the, <clears throat> I'm so sorry about my voice, uh, been there to get another duct tape. Again, they all come in handy-licious. Handy-licious. Right, so again, before heading into the house, go around to the back of the house. In this bin, we can find another fire starter. They are definitely come few and far between, so they're always nice to find. And then we're going to head up to the back. So we're going to head up this, um, basically heading up onto the roof. Take a left. And now we can build a bridge because we've got the hammer and we've got uh, at least one piece of hardware. That builds the bridge for us. Head over to the other side of the roof and then make sure in the roof little hole right there make sure to grab the document and then we can hit drop back down Carl had no idea how to interpret a message like that on the surface it seemed like he had one half too many of this puzzle enough to know he shouldn't take this testimony as gospel okay so we've dropped off the roof we're gonna head back into la Motti moth moth bags garage and there's a couple of things we are gonna grab because we need to get some things going for the Snowmobile to fix the snowmobile. 
uh, but we can actually repair the spaceship. We got duct tape hardware and the pliers or the pincers. Um, it won't work, but it will give us the astronaut achievement, which is all we ever wanted, isn't it? So, shh, job done. That's what we like. Right, so, uh, getting rid of Lamotte's uh, knuckle the echidna's hands again. Head towards his house. And uh, we're actually going to enter his house for the first time. I just realised we haven't entered it yet. So, straight on to the left is where the uh, we can make a fire, get a save, get warm up our... Little wiener cockles as well. And literally to the left of it is a document that we can pick up. But for some reason, I decided to go all the way to the right-hand side, go around these boxes, and then pick it up. Um, but yeah, it was literally to the left of the fire right there. Uh, but the follow-up on a complaint, that is, a believe, another document to pick up. And now I'm not sure if these count, but it's worth picking up. The document here on the table which is the manufacturer's manual. Make sure to read, again, all pages. This should be three. Um, the hat you don't have to interact with, but again, I believe the spaceship here on the right-hand side, we will pick it up and we will keep it, the blueprint. Um, but I do believe that that is it for Lamotte Hoyce. Okay, coming up to another paparazzi and another campfire. So take a left... And you can already see, we're going to go past Lamotte's garage, straight up, straight through the uh, gap in the fence. Make sure to get your hatchet out, as when we continue going straight, there is going to be a wolf that we need to take care of, as it were. Carl still wasn't done with the mechanics place. <laughs> Carl never thought he would be dancing with the wolves. Okay, once we get rid of the wolf, continue on forward, and then what you're going to see is a rather hollow and empty grave is just going to be coming up. This is very important to take a picture of, as we need it for the next paparazzi achievement. So that should be paparazzi 8 out of 15 now. Count them, 8, not 18, not 27, but 8 out of 15. Okay, and then directly in front of us then is the next campfire as well. So that should be job done. Okay, so continue forward. You should have the crowbar. So we'll break the fence. Again, I never once got rid of the crowbar. Uh, directly and immediately to your right, what you're going to find is some more fire starters. So crack it open, grab a couple of fire starters, or one for instance. Now there is only one way to go here. So you just need to follow the... Uh, boardwalks and then at the next opportunity we can turn to the right we will do so and then just follow the path around and then continue on to the left and we're going to get the SOS achievement here so, what you need to do is move the lever, and then make sure to press the button here. We need to inspect the recording. That is what will get us the SOS achievement. Okay, job done. Right, so you can see that there is this building. Oh, yeah, first of all, if you need some heat, make sure to turn this on, and somehow, somehow, in the middle of absolute annihilability winterous, this radiator generates enough heat that you can actually warm your cockles up. Lovely. Right. So, uh, again, that's just optional, though. So, you see this little building here. Where we need to basically... Uh, there's four levers that we need to press. So, the first lever here, directly to the left, we're going to turn this one twice. And then, if we go up to the next one, we're going to turn this lever three times. Unos, dos, tres. My name's Pipple. Oh, yeah. And then the next one, we're going to turn just once. 
and then you can hear a noise which basically signifies that the door is open so the last one you can leave where it is so open says me grab the key and that's job done yeah now we can effectively just head all the way back down the uh, back down the same path that we came the other paths just have a dead end in them if you were wondering any piece of metal Right, okay, so now we need to go to Lamotte's garage. We need to find everything now for the to fix up the snowmobile. So the first couple of things are in here, just on the right hand side is some handlebars and on the spaceship we'd already built, make sure to grab the headlight as well. So that should be handlebars and headlights in Lamotte's garage. Uh, take a right and you can see this just next to the house is this cooler box, open that up for another headlight. And then if we, we're going to head down sort of towards the back area of the house. Now, this is where we can fill up the gas can, which we couldn't do before if we'd done the low checkpoint spawn your vehicle back in. That's where we can get the gas. So make sure to do that and then head to the other opposite end of the car. Open up the boot uh, or the, the front of it or whatever it is to grab a, another snowmobile part. Heading towards the front of the house you, to find another... Uh, snowmobile ski then we are here at the left side of the house continuing on left you can see this little beach umbrella incredibly uh, but we need to pick up the uh, the bench right there and then if you want you can inspect that but it makes no difference uh, then we can head to the back uh, of the house where the snowmobile actually is and we are looking for the one final thing and it's literally where we are just to the left it's hanging up like a towel. It is the snowmobile tracks. So just go ahead, uh, place everything on everything. And as long as you've got everything, which you should have done, that is what will get us the mechanic achievement. A bit of gas, a new spark plug and a key. And this thing would run perfectly. All he needed to do now was to find all that. Now, again, if you've done that right, you should get the mechanic achievement. The best thing that you can do, though, is we keep all our items from the truck. So you can still deposit and withdraw items. Uh, it makes no difference whatsoever. So we're going to get rid of... The pliers, the pincers, the hammers, the duct tapes, any hardware, um, we'll keep, uh, we've only got one log on us, so obviously we're going to keep that, but just get rid of those things, we don't particularly need them, but we can now drive with the uh, snowmobile, which makes this slightly a little bit easier. So we're actually going to be now going for the final talisman. So what we need to do is head uh, towards the exit, uh, we will need to open up the gate though. So yeah, a little bit of stuttering in progress right there, so my bad, apologies. 
But what we're going to do, we are going to take, when we get out of here, take a right and then an immediate right again. So effectively, we're heading down this hill with the fence here on our right. And at the bottom, you will find the final talisman, which will get us the Talismaniac. Oh, speaking of which, does anyone remember the Tasmanian Devil? You know, Taz. The, like, yeah. From the Looney Tunes. Oh, my God. Oh, man, memories flooding back. But anyway, here is the final talisman. Get the Talismaniac achievement. And then that should be six out of six. Job done. And then we can actually just drive back up onto the main road. So, when the achievement finally unlocked and we're back up to the main road, we're going to take a right and just continue following on the main road for the time being. We're going to be heading towards the next campfire. And in a second or two, on your left, we are going to stop here where you can find this overturned, looks like a cart or something, um, or overturned trailer, whatever it is. Uh, but that is where we need to go because directly in front of that is the next campfire. And just again, oh, I, you know, I don't think I've shown the map for a while. But anyway, that is where it exactly was on the map. Um, so start the fire if you want. But I chose not to this time because I don't think that we've got many um, fire cracking starters left. So that's why I left it for that time being. Uh, there is a log or two there if you need some. Uh, but we can just get back in the snowmobile and continue on. In fact, what we're going to do, we're actually going to go for the ice cave now. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go more or less straight, but slightly left, uh, slightly left off the main road. We are going to be going for the uh, next, or, or we're actually finally be going to going and looking for the icy caverns is what I'm looking for, the icy caves. So, on the main road, and then we're just going to take a left slightly off the main road. Right about just past this fence here. Now, where that little ice formation was off the road, straight up is the ice cave. Some wolves will be running out, but they shall not give you any problem. Thou shall pass. Easy, easy, cheesy, does it? Right, now this is why the big thick coat came in handy, because you wouldn't be lasting too long in here at all. Yeah, that's why it's called the Icy Caverns, bruv. Right, uh, as we go forward, you're going to see two paths. One to the right and one to the left. One's the light, the left is dark. We're going to choose the left dark path. And if you don't have a hammer on you, there is a hammer on one of these boxes. The first one will be come to here on the right. So make sure to pick up this hammer. There is also, on the next box or two, some hardware that we're going to pick up as well. There it is. And again, because we do need to build a bridge, which is why we're doing that. Plus, if we open up the bag here, there is another fire starter and some matches. And there we go. And that was actually the sign of the right path. So if you went around the right path, you wouldn't get the materials needed. There is the next campfire as well. Uh, so again, I do like that one as well, because we've got a couple of fire starters. And it's nice to make a little save here as well. You don't actually need to get the hatchet out just yet, but there will be uh, ever so soon a ghost wolf, which if you've played Kona 2 Broom, you will know all about those ghost animals. So don't worry about that wolf there. He won't attack you just yet. So continue on forward, building the bridge. Ooh, my voice seems a little better all of a sudden, doesn't it? Still killing me softly with its touch, killing my whole life. Meh, meh, meh. Anyway, from here, we are going to get out our camera because we are coming up to the next uh, paparazzi, which is going to be Région Bluin. And we are going to take a picture of Région. 
There is said religion, so make sure to take the picture, make sure that it says keep picture. And that is going to be paparazzi 9 out of 15, and then go ahead and finish off his vision. Another instance of this magic ice. What was this one doing? Lying on the ground, so afraid. The plot thickened like water into ice. He had been running in fear from something creeping towards him, against which he couldn't do anything, only to end up like this, petrified and cold. Okay, so once you have turned on, you need to turn on the, uh, well, basically the light right here. Um, and then, again, just keep following the little bit of vision. And then once Rejon has popped that up, we can then go ahead and read the document. Again, it's very easy to miss, but make sure that you look at every single page in Rejon's log right here. Again, it's so easy to just pick it up and then quickly press the B button to miss it. Plus, you'll get the achievement there, Lost Cause. That is the basically story related. Right, there is a piece of hardware on the table just left of the dynamite. Um, right there, so pick that up as well. And pick up all three bits of dynamite as well. And pick up a log or two for your viewing pleasure. Uh, pick up the duct, duct tape as well on the right. Turn directly around, head to the other side. You can grab some more ammo here. Uh, well, that's cigarettes, but you can start a fire as well if you want an autosave. Uh, plus, you can pick out some cigarettes. Again, we're not going to because we ain't going to smoke at all through the game. Uh, but there is the hardware, which I didn't pick up. Now I am. Turn directly around. Oh, and the players as well. Turn directly around. Make sure to pick up the ammo and the rifle as well. The rifle we won't be using until we've actually... After we've completed the game, because we're going to do a little bit of save manipulation. Or, i.e. just uh, reload the save. But we do get an achievement there for finding the rifle. So once you pop that one in, make sure to interact with the, uh, well, it's a ladder, effectively, helping us get down. And then if we turn directly around, we can get, get back over the bridge and start heading straight. From here, make sure to get your hatchet out, because we are going to get the Kona 2 Broom Ghost Wolf that's going to appear. So you need to take care of him quickly, because I do believe the ghost versions pack a little bit more of a punch. <laughs> ah, win, dude. You are my KFC today. Anyway, so here we are then, back in Rejon's little bit, but if we head all the way to the end, uh, you should get an option right in the middle of here to place your dynamite. Obviously, dynamite's very explosive, so you're going to need to head back past these poles, basically until the warning symbol pops off there. That means you're far enough away. And then once it's gone, head straight through. No stone. Now, as you can see, it is now nighttime, and it will stay nighttime for the rest of the game. But there is a little trick we can do. Uh, so we're just going to head down the ladder, but basically what we're going to do is turn up the gamma, and it basically makes it look like daytime. Um, but it will stay, because we've now reached all four visions, um, it will stay nighttime, as I said, for the rest of the game. Uh, but I am just going to go ahead and go back and find my snowmobile so uh just in terms of knowing and figuring out where we are uh your snowmobile should be i think just just to the left i believe so go ahead and find that
Now, as you can see on the map, we're going to go ahead and get the next campfire. So we're effectively going to the right on the map um, without going on to the main road. That is what we're going to be doing. But again, like I said, make sure to... Well, I turn the snowmobile around and then I'm going to sort out the gamma uh, thing. But the... Um, yeah, so I pop the gamma up to about 3.5. It's on one as sort of default as automatic. Um, but it is definitely worth doing, as you're going to be able to see. Going into your options, graphics options, gamma, put it up to three and a half, and it just makes life so much easier for us. So, and that's exactly what I was born to do. Make your gaming experiences easier, which I know I don't always do, so... Ah, uh, my bad sometimes. Sometimes. Right, how easier is that? That just makes life easier. Bing, bang, bosh. That's real good nosh, mate. Um, you know, 3, 3.5, whichever it is. Um, 3's... Yeah, yeah, 3's relatively good. Um, so I eventually end up putting it back up to 3.5 anyway. So, ah. Anyway, have a look at the map. And again, we're going to be heading in the, sort of where we are. To the right on the map. Um, but again, not on the main road. We are going to be going... And we're going to be going ahead and grabbing the next campfire now. Don't feel bad for losing, Wolfie. I was wrestling wolves while you're still at your mother's teeth. Willie from The Simpsons. Everyone knows that quote. It's a classic. Anyway, here is the next campfire. We get a nice steak for our trouble. Uh, mate, I don't know why you're feeding it to the wolves. Get it down you, Carl Fober boy. You need a good solid steak, a cigarette, and a drink. Two of which we can't actually do, so make sure not to do that. Okay, so we are now going to head out. All the way back to the Le Chans house, which is the opposite side of the bridge. So we're going to head onto the main road. We're going to head all the way down and we're going to go back to the Le Chans house, which is just underneath the general store right there, because we're going to be getting another campfire and another Miss Kalanikas achievement. So get your buns on the main road and blah, blah, blah.
Okay, so we are coming up to it. There's the left, so make sure to go up there. Now, there are two gaps in the fence. It's not the first one we just passed. It's a little bit further up. Past the car. And then right here on our left is where we are going to snip through with the snowmobile. So, you can, uh, if you just keep heading straight, you will eventually see this big, massive pile of boulderish rocks straight in front of you. Uh, that's what we need, so continue following the pile of rocks to the right. And then, slightly, it's going to be, yeah, so you can see the, still the, the boulder, boulderish rocks on the right. Get off your uh, snowmobile, and there is the cavern of what we need. The next one, right next to the Lachance house, the cave. Uh, so go ahead, dynamite it up. That will actually get us the Kaboom achievement. And there is a campfire inside as well. But I don't like this one. So yeah, as you can see, we grabbed a couple of uh, fire starters, there was a med kit, some matches, um, but I, again, I don't light the fire, but as I said, it still counts for us because we got near it. So that is job done. Now again, there's a reason that we've done it in this particular order, because what we're going to do now, we're going to head back onto the main road, and we're actually going to take... Now remember that fork earlier, so we went left where we've got, uh, done the Lamotte stuff, the Doctory stuff... This time, at the fork, right after the general store, we're going to take a right, and we're going to go over that bridge, and smash out a whole bunch of stuff that way. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't the best. What I tried doing was looking for the main road and then coming through the general store. As it turns out, I tried just jumping over the stream for some particular reason. Anyway, here back at the fork, this time again, we're going to stick with the right-hand side path and continue onwards. We're going to now go to the Blair house. Not the Blaze house, is it? I, mean, I think it's the, or the Blair house. Blair. So, continuing on forward until we reach the destination on our left here. Now, there is nothing in that mailbox, so don't worry that you haven't missed anything. But as we head up here, here is the Blair house. Blair, Blair, Blair. Sounds like a, sounds like a metal breakdown, doesn't it? Blair. Everyone's favorite. Anyway, heading towards the shed. Reach the object with our um, magnet wire. And then, obviously, just jump straight in. A couple of little items we can grab here if you want. On the right, there's another two fire starters, which should be good. There is another gas can there if you need it. Uh, but again, only one should be fine. A couple of flares there on the left-hand side. Um, as long as you've got one or two flares, again, for an achievement at the very end of the game after we complete it, that is fine. Um, otherwise, we can just head straight into the blah, blah, blah house. Um, yes, uh, nice boot. Anyway, once we get in, um, and obviously because the gamma's up, the brightness is going to be a little mental, but uh, make sure to pick up this key. Very important to pick up that key right there. Um, you don't have to attach the wire again. Um, you can light the fire if you want an autosave and a bit of warming up the old cocky cock cocks. 
But uh, there is a document, very important, on the sink in the drawer, top drawer of the sink. There is the next document that we can read. Found one for, for a while, have we? Head through the curtains and up the stairs. Turn directly around to your left and back. And in the top drawer on the left is the next. It's another drawing. Le Monster. Le Monster. Oh, whatever it is. Anyway. Heading into the next bedroom, over into the right-hand side, there is another little document, Louise's diary. How do you say Louise in English French? Louise. 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 Ah, I wish I didn't do that. My throat hurts. Oh, my God. What's down here? It's Wolfie. Get out of here, Wolfie, you son of a God damn it. Anyway, uh, there is a steak there as well. You should have... At least three or four steaks, um, so you should be fairly okay. But it's always worth it if you want to pick it up, so you are not, um, so you're not having to fight any wolves. Of course, it's probably easier if you just want to do the steak stuff. So pick it up if you so wish. But it is there. Uh, to the left of the door, very left of the door, there you need to inspect the floor, push it over, inspect the phone, inspect the floor, push it over, and the note from Martin Blair, Blair, Blair. Or Martine, blah, blah, blah. Before heading out, look directly into your left, into the bathroom, into the top left cupboard to find some more painkillers. And, uh, ooh, which one is it in? Oh, yeah, there's a fire starter in the bottom of the two drawers. And just to the right on the floor is the next document. On unsolvable accident. Or in... Just English, English, an unsolvable accident newspaper document. So, there we go. That's everything in the blah, blah, blah house. And, ooh, what are we going to head for next? We're actually going to be heading for the cabins. Um, Yeah, so that's what we're heading for. We're going to be heading for the cabin A and cabin B. So, once we get back out onto the main road from the blah, blah, blah. Told ya, there's nothing in it. But I did want to just double check there and make sure that there definitely wasn't, which there was not. So from here on the main road, we're going to take a right and then we're going to take very quickly another left. So you're going to see it popping up on your left anytime soon, just next to these logs, just past these logs here. There we go. So this is the entrance to the cabins. Now we've got a couple of paparazzi things coming up and some more campfires and everything. And another chessboard, actually, the second out of three. So jump off here. This is going to be cabin A. So we are going to go inside. Again, make sure every building that you find like this, just go inside. And that counts towards the house cabin's achievement. Start a fire. Warm up the old nopple nipples. Um, and there is the chessboard in the... Here. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was in the next one. Sorry. No, it's here. So make sure to move the piece on the chessboard. That will count. And that will be chessboard piece two out of three. Okay, uh, but that's it. That is literally it for this room. So what we can do now, from the uh, cabin, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple of logs. But basically from the cabin, if you're looking at the cabin directly there, just to the left and to the back of it. So just head past the uh, logs here on our left. Straight through to the back is going to be a campfire, and there is going to be a crossbow as well, plus another couple of wolves. So, obviously, we're going to get rid of this. There is going to be a bit of an edit, purely because stupid me completely missed this crossbow the first time through, even though I was genuinely certain I didn't, but I actually did. So, follow the wolf tracks. It should be more or less straight in front of you anyway. Uh, a wolf will appear. There they are. So, give them the old throw throws. And on the, our right, you can see the smoke bellowing out of the tree. That is because the crossbow bolt is in it. So take a picture of the crossbow bolt, which should be crossbow bolt number two out of six. And it should be paparazzi number 10 out of 15. And of course, if you want to light a fire, you can do. Probably not worth wasting a fire starter, though, just in case, since we've got a fire going in the... Um, 
in the cabin A that we just came out of. So, But again, make sure that you take a picture of that crossbow bolt. I missed it the first time like an absolute noobhausen. Okay, so sticking with this area then, uh, we're going to be going for uh, campfire number 13, uh, or 14, sorry, campfire 14 I believe this is, no? So from the campfire, slightly left, we're going to continue following the wolf tracks. And continue, 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 and then you can probably see it actually directly in front of us. So yeah, straight there, that is the next campfire done. Okay, so we're just going to head now back towards the snowmobile. So again, you're effectively heading more or less just straight, um, uh, more or less again in a straight path until we see cabin A, and then we can go ahead and get back on our snowmobile. We're going to go to cabin B B B B. God, oh, it's a hell of a hit, but we made it tit. We made tit. Right, so get yourselves in house cabin. Uh, I believe this is number 11 out of 16, if if my uh, things are to be corrected. Uh, my notes here, uh, grab the three fire starters directly from left from the door. There's another hardware, piece of hardware, and there's a document here on the right-hand side. A note to Paul and Jean-Pierre. Don't forget to return the key for the cabin if you have to use it. Thank you. And pick up the key as well, because, you know, it's the forest cabin key. Uh, there's a magnet in there if you want to have a little look through. Um, there is, again, I think it's some beer and cigarettes, which we don't need. We definitely don't want. Um, there are some matches, though, as well. Uh, but that's really it for cabin B. That's literally it. But we're not quite done with this one just yet, because we're going to get the next treasure map. So, if we head behind the cabin, go past this ice little formation on the left... Continue sort of heading up the hill. Eventually, what we're going to see, uh, slightly to the right, is another big piece of log. Oh, well, no, in fact, it's just the cross trees, sorry. So the cross trees, that is actually treasure map number 8 out of 10. We had, didn't uh, we didn't have one for a while, did V. No, no, no. Okay. Time now to get... Um, oh, in fact, that wasn't even cabin B, sorry. What was it, cabin B? No, it wasn't even cabin B just yet. Now we're going to be going to cabin B, um, which is going to be house cabin number 12, plus we're going to get another paparazzi crossbow bolt combo and another treasure map. So get back onto your Snowgoss mobile. Yum. And then continuing on straight forward. It's literally only going to be up the road here anyway. So take a left. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And... Okay, it's a little bit further than I remembered. But here it is. This is cabin B. Right, you can already see the smoke bellowing out of the cabin. That is, of course, the next crossbow bolt, which 
As I said, it's going to be number 3 out of 6 for the crossbow bolts, but 11 out of 15 for the paparazzi achievement. So there we go again. Keep the picture and you should be good to go. <coughs> oh, I do apologize. Oh, how unprofessional. So looking slightly to the left, away from the cabin, uh, if we start heading up the uh, little bit of a hill, on our right you can see the big pile of logs. That's what we're looking for, and that is where treasure map 9 out of 10 is. So yep, we've got one more left to go. And then we actually have to go all the way back to Le, Le Chances, around the Le Chance house, by the general store, in order to actually get the treasure. Which uh, generally is not worth it, but hey... It is if you're an achievement hunter, huh? I am the hunter, the big bad hunter. Ah, achievement hunter, bruh. So head back down to cabin B. Remember to go inside. You definitely have to go inside the cabin for it to count towards the house cabin achievement. What is that achievement called, actually? What the... Where are we? It's uh, uh, Carl the Explorer. Um, yeah, so that's what the achievement's called, but we're going to keep calling it House Cabins. So, once you have done with that, and you've got a bit of a fire going, we're all toasty mosty, chicken teriyosti. Uh, there is a duct tape there as well to grab if you want that. Um, on our right, just underneath the radio, there's a first aid kit. Always worth grabbing a few as much as you can. Um, but that's pretty much it now for this room, so we can get back out. And we can head back towards the main road. Right, so back on the main road, we are going to take a right, and I'm going to be coming up to the, uh, we're going to effectively now, I think, just go all the way to the end, where we find another couple of campfires. So head all the way to the end until we see a blue car, which is just parked up and basically crashed, and chill dogging. Not raw dogging, just chill dogging. There it is, chill dogging. Right, what you're going to see is a crossbow bolt again sticking out of it, out of the blue car. But what we're going to do is get the first campfires. Uh, we're going to get the two campfires first. So, um, again, make sure that you... Uh, oh, we're just withdrawing a couple of things, aren't we? So, yep, get rid of the... Um, I do keep at least one duct tape and at least one hardware. And actually, not this time. So we're going to get rid of those, get rid of the guns and everything that you really don't need. Um, pick up a couple of logs if you need it. Again, we've got, still got 30, so still plenty, plenty. So turn directly to your left from the blue car. And you should see the campfire more or less directly straight in front of you. There it is. There will be a wolf, so you either need to get a steak or a hatchet. Okay, well, thank you. Come again. Uh, right, get the steak out of the cooler. Sorry, sorry, I know we, we, we're in a time where we can't be doing accents without everyone being culturally appropriation. and uh, You can't you can't like any other cultures now without being called out for it or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, once you have found that campfire, head back to the main road. Uh, yeah, there's the main road. I don't know where the hell I was going. And then on the opposite side of the main road, so more or less to the right... There we go. So just past the fence is going to be the next campfire as well. So heading straight through once again, you're going to need to climb up. You see the boulders directly in front of us, the rock pile. Climb up the little uh, little mountain hill and there on the right is the next campfire. Plus you can get a couple of fire starters in the bag and another couple of logs if you need it. 
And then what we can do is just head straight back down to the main road to the blue car in order to get crossbow bolt or take a picture of crossbow bolt number 4 out of 6 and for paparazzi 12 out of 15. Now for some reason I get completely lost again. Eh. Hey, there we go. We found ourselves. We found the way eventually. Funny how all I had to do was literally just turn around and then go straight. But, uh, well, apparently I had my bunk eye on that day. So there's the crossbow then sticking out of the car. Again, as I said, that'll be number 4 out of 6 and 12 out of 15 for the paparazzi. And so, from here, we can now head directly to our right through the gap in the fence. And we're going to start coming up to the ice wall. Make sure to pick up the document, the ranger manual on the floor as well. That's the Wilfred Roy document. And then head straight on past the ice formation. We're going to be coming up to the ice wall. And the reason the fall of the wall falls is because we've uh, already done all four visions. But what we're going to do, when the ice wall eventually falls and the visions stop... So it's basically going to be like a cutscene vision, and then the, the uh, ice wall will go away. We're not going to go through it just yet, because we do have to get the last treasure map and get that achievement out of the way before moving on. The Phantom, freed of reality's shackles, vanished in the forest. Earlier, Carl had witnessed the tragedy that befell it. Another Phantom disappeared in the wilderness. Carl had seen what happened to it, too. A third phantom gently faded away. Carl noticed that as the cursed villagers finally left reality, he could feel a sense of unburdening exuding from them in an almost intimate way. The last phantom, lost in solitude up until now, joined the others in the forest's darkness, free at last to enjoy an eternal, well-deserved slumber. Carl was only beginning to understand the horror which had struck his village. He understood that the dead were piling up and that he couldn't... Right, so we're going to get the achievement, the fall of the wall, eventually. But again, do not go through it just yet. We're going to take an immediate right before going through the wall. So take a right and then take another right as we get... It. There it is, look. That started happening way too often towards the end of the game. Right, again, and there is the final treasure map. But again, we're not going to get the achievement here. We need to, we need, we would have needed to find all these 10 treasure maps, then heading back all the way basically to the Le Chance house to get the actual treasure itself. It's around that area. So that's what we're going to do. So head back down to the left. Again, we're not, we're basically heading towards the main road where our snowmobile is. And in fact, I do actually believe it's more or less closer to the Roy house. So all we're doing is literally just driving in the, in the main road, straight line, past the general store and all the way down that way.
Right, so just after we fi uh, see the 1556 sign on the right, we're actually going to slow down and make a stop here. Purely because we are going to make a... Uh, you can see the campfire on your left. That's what we're aiming for there. Uh, so we are going to make... We're going to get over there. Just in case we're a little bit cold, we want to make a little autosave as well, just in case. But turn around directly, go across the other side of the road... And you're going to see a gap in the fence. The same gap that we actually came through to use the campfire earlier. Head immediately to your left. And there you can see the last and final treasure piece directly in front of us. This is what's going to get us the achievement there called Treasure Hunter. And I believe that is another document as well. Letter for Marie. My sweet Marie. you got a flare gun. Literally could have just bought one of them from the shop, so thank you for taking me everywhere. And my name's Carl, not Marie. Surely you can't be serious. I am. And don't call me Shirley. Okay, so since that achievement is finally done, we got no more treasure maps left to try and find. So, what we are going to do now is we're going to head hilariously and fantastically all the way back to the ice wall. So we're heading back past the general store, at the fork, taking the right, and just heading all the way straight until we get to the blue car, crossbow bolt car again. Okay, uh, now I don't, I got the save there just in case, but we're actually going to be coming up to another, we've still got a couple of campfires and things left to grab anyway, uh, that was more of a just in case, but this time we're actually going to take our snowmobile through this time. So, just continue on heading straight, and then what we are going to find... Uh, we need to take, uh, so you've got this big building, oh, well, I say big building, it's uh, the big stone wall, more or less, right in front of us. You can just continue heading up, it's really only one way that we can go. Uh, so straight through the skinnier part of the walls, and we're actually going to be coming up to the final document as well. So if you've been playing along, you should get the final That's document achievement, item. plus the oh, next crossbow bolt. The so there's the campfire, interact with the document on the rock and straight in front of you, and again... You should now get that achievement, the reader achievement for reading all of the documents. Now, if for whatever reason you don't get it, the crossbow bolt here is on the left, so make sure to take a picture of that. That'll be 5 out of 6 crossbow bolts and 13 out of 15 paparazzis. Uh, but yeah, if you don't get it for whatever particular reason, you'll either just have to go around... Um, uh, again, you should... Have it because, you know, we've picked up effectively, we, you know, there's not that many documents. There's nothing that's really hard to miss. Um, so, But anyway, hopefully you have got it anyway. So with this snowmobile, go back, go past the tree and then stick on the mound here on the right hand side. And then we're going to head down. And you can see this little cabin, the observation tower. Now, I actually missed going through this cabin for the first time, which is why the achievement didn't unlock me. I didn't realize this counted as one, but it obviously actually did. 
So head up the observation tower. And there's a medi kit, one of the first aid kit, and uh, some flares as well. Again, make sure, like I said earlier, if you don't have a flare, make sure to pick up at least one for an achievement um, right at the very, very end of the game. Um, I can't jump off, but I can jump down there. It's almost shatter my ankles. So again, make sure that from here, you go in to the cabin. Or you can go around the back, but there's nothing there. Um, so yeah, make sure that you go in to the bloody cabin, mate. Because again, I actually missed doing this. we got one more cabin left to do after this one. I didn't go through to this one. Um, only because there's nothing of note in here, but you need to go in it for the Car the Explorer achievement. So, yeah. So once you do have, have, hiv, have, have, have done that, uh, get your, get your cockles warmed up, and then we can get back out onto our snowmobile. Okay, so we're heading for the next campfire now. So, head down. Now, you have to be very careful with this uh, next area. Don't go down all the way. There's a right here, just um, where there was like a bunch of logs that we were going to go through. So, take a right. Sorry that that was a little bit quick. Head up on this mound, and then continue on to the right. Uh, so, again, I do apologize if that seemed a little uh, a little bit tricky and a little bit uh, sort of tricky to explain. It was a bit fast. But once you get here... This is where the next campfire is. But yeah, effectively, on that main path we were going down, don't go down all the way. It was literally just as you were coming up to the um, sort of two stony pieces each side. You should have taken a right, and then you get to this area. But again, I do apologize. That was uh, probably uh, that was a crappy explanation and a crappy showing from me. A bit too fast. So that's my bad homies. Right, there is going to be a ghost wolf that will be attacking us, uh, sort of appearing and trying to attack us at well, a lot of turns in this area. For a lot of the time, you can ignore him, but it's probably worth just uh, battering him down. But head to the left from the last campfire. You see the uh, formation, the a little ice rock thing there. Uh, so we're sort of back on the main little path area. Um, and we actually need to build a bridge, so you're going to need to get a hammer. And a um, some materials out. Seems like the elements showed mercy to those nice and solid looking plants. Thanks. Seems like the elements showed mercy to those nice and solid looking plants. On the snowmobile we go. Now, this time we're going to take an immediate... After we get over the bridge, take an immediate right. Because we are going to find a burnt cottage. I know it's not very good that things are burning, but those trees look actually pretty damn cool. So, you see the burnt cottage? We're going to nip it off. Going to get a couple of achievements going here. Right now, I believe. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. I don't know. No, we're not here. Uh, but once we get inside, this again counts as another housing cabin. There is a first aid kit, though. Um, that's the sort of main, the only main thing in this area. Oh, plus a little bit of uh, hardware again. Uh, but there's only two. And now, if we take a little look at the map, we are going to head up towards the final cabin. It should be the final cabin in the game, where we are going to get a whole bunch of achievements pop in. Um, again, hopefully they've been popping as you've been following along. Right, okay, with it then, I'll try and explain best I can, but we're just basically going to keep heading straight, so just straight through the trees. The ghost wolf will appear here, so try to ignore him if you can, but continue heading straight through the trees. You're on the, back on the main path, um, and you can see the big logs uh, here on the right, uh, the left with the cabin. Um, if the wolf is still chasing you, just give it a bit of a hatchet, and uh, again, make sure not to shoot the wolf, make sure to just give him a hatchet. 
take a picture of the crossbow bolt. Very, very important. This is actually the last crossbow bolt. Um, and paparazzi 14 out of 15. So this should get you the hunt achievement. Not the, not the uh, Mike hunt achievement. Just the regular hunt. Once we go inside the cabin, that should also get us the explorer achievement. Carl the explorer. And we also have the final chessboard in here as well. So give yourself a little tapity tap tap tap. Sounded like some of countdown then, didn't I? But no, uh, so that should be three. It should be three achievements. Right meow, right meow. Um, oh, and plus some, yeah, some ammo there. But yeah, once you've moved the final chessboard piece, so you should have got the hunt, Carl the Explorer, and the chess master achievement popping off as well there. So, now let's go and grab our two final campfires. So, let's take a little look at the map once again. And again, as I said, the more we go, the uh, Ghost Wolf's going to keep popping us off. Okay, so, on the snowmobile then, we're going to back out of the... We're going to sort of reverse it, and we're going to go where the cabin is in front of us. We're going to take a right on the next path. I do believe. Yep, yeah, well, getting a bit, uh, getting a, oh, no, uh, Jesus. We're getting a bit snippy right here. Yes, so we are going to take a right. So we back out. We're going to take a right if you are directly looking at the cabin. Um, just continuing on forward. The wolf will appear here. Take a left from where the wolf appeared. There's a, a ice formation there. Uh, but continue on. Just go down the left. Don't go up. Go left and continue onwards. Woo. And then if we take another little tiny left, you can see the next campfire. The wolf has appeared for me again, so you're going to have to get your hatchet out and kill it. Uh, but again, I do apologize if that was a bit quick and not the best explanation. And some more delicioso. Ooh, delicioso uh, stuff. Matches and first aid kits and, uh, you know. I bet Carl's gasping for a cheeky beer right now, isn't he? It's a lot to go through. Um, but yeah, if you need a couple of painkillers, I'd tend to... Uh, don't use any first aid kits if possible. Try and use up all the painkillers before. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to head sort of back on ourselves. So we're going to go back up to that little mound, up on that little path. Take a right here, obviously, and head back down towards the sort of main path. Uh, we're going to be coming up to our final campfire. Slow right down. You can see the ice formation here. This time, we are going to... Oh, sorry, this next ice formation. We're going to take a left this time. And again, the wolf, I think, is going to appear one last time. Because he's a douche wolf. There he is. But there is the final campfire. And the achievement should be unlocking. Uh, marshmallows, the achievement should be called. Ah, you son of a god. Stop eating me. Anyway, this again, as I said, should be the final campfire. If you can, make sure that you've got a log with you. Um, only because this would come in handy as the sort of... This is now the last sort of auto-save place. Um, again, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Because you can manually save it anyway. Um, but obviously, just... Yeah. Anyway, so that should be... Now, this one took a while for it to unlock. That's why there was a little bit of an edit there. Because I was waiting around for about five minutes. Before it decided to pop its beautiful rare achievement head. Um... And now, we can just go ahead and continue on with the main story. We've got the collectibles. We are all squared away. So, we're just going to head basically up now towards that main path where that, where that little walking icon is.
Right, so before we go up then, make sure that this time you do have the gun. We're not going to shoot, but make sure that you've got the flare gun, one flare at the very least, the Lee Enfield rifle, and some ammo. And the reason we're doing this is because once we finish the game, we can just go ahead and reload the last checkpoint, which would have been literally just before we finished the game. Um, and then you can just quickly get those two gun achievements out of the way as well, rather than having to start from this or last autosave, having to go through the good five minutes of visions again, and it being a pain in the ass uh, just to try and shoot the uh, last boss here. I'd say he's a boss, he's more of a screamy little douchebag. Again, if you've played Kona, Kona 2, you'll know exactly what kind of boss it is, because it's exactly the same one. Um, but again, like I said, make sure that you've got, as I said, the flare gun, at least one flare, um, and the Lee Enfield rifle, and some ammo. Make sure to grab all the medikits and the first aid kits that you can as well. And let's get to it. Let's get the paparazzi achievement going as well. Um, this is where we're going to get it, so get your camera out. Don't go... Too close to the Wendigo. It, well, I've already spoiled it for you now. It is the Wendigo. Um, but make sure to take a picture. And once you have taken the picture, if you have got all 15 out of 15, uh, this should be the 15th one now. So, um, babada booby and all that. And again, after a good solid, like, three minutes of waiting. Ah, there it goes. Paparazzi will unlock and then... Yep. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. So this vision's going to last quite a few minutes, but it is going to tie up the story quite nicely, and all the mysteries will be mysteriously solved. Yeah. It looked like a simple hunting accident. There was Hamilton. Carl recognized him. A major hunting accident. The doctor examined the young woman. But death couldn't be overturned. She was dead. It was not the type of body you buried in a big ceremony in the village graveyard. It had to be hidden. No one could know about this. The best way to do that was to have a simple-minded man bury the poor girl. Lamotte, the mechanic. The doctor denied the unfair death of the young woman, but Hamilton had him in his grips. Hamilton knew all of the poet's secrets and wouldn't hesitate to reveal them. I know all about your crimes, you little communist. You know mine. What a sordid affair. Okay, so the whole final boss sequence uh, coming up in just a little bit is a chase sequence. So he's going to continue to chase us while wolves start attacking us. Now, obviously, we can't shoot the wolves because we're trying to finish the game without um, shooting. Um, so it's effectively just a case of having to run past. And always be on alert if your health, because I get bitten quite a few times here. I think I end up using like three or four first aid kits. Um, so we need to be on our uh, guard, and what we're going to do is get another miscellaneous achievement here. Two will pop, the murderer and Carl Forbel, private investigator. Um, they're basically, that is for gathering all the evidence in the game, so that's all the documents and everything read, so as long as you've got those achievements, you'll grab that one. Plus, when we start, 
quickly go into your inventory, pick out a steak, and just throw it to the Wendigo. So, one steak, that's all you need. Give it a throw at the Wendigo, and eventually the vegan achievement should unlock. Again, it takes a while for it to unlock. Um, but yes, yeah, so it is literally just a chase scene now. Now, the Wendigo can't really catch up with you unless you're just constantly looking at him, and then obviously you will. The hatchet, it's not worth trying to hatchet the wolves. There's about 10 that appear, and it's just, it, it's honestly, unless it's right in your way, it is just not worth it. Um, it's not worth you slowing, completely slowing down just to. Um, fight them. So you're literally just running in an absolute straight line, trying to avoid all the wolf bites if you can. Um, it can be a little, to be honest, it can be a little bit uh, tense, just because you can hear the wolves, but uh, you can't, you you can't sort of feel the the wolf bites on your butt. But again, if your health starts getting a little bit too low, make sure to whack out a couple of. Uh, again, I tend to try and use all the painkillers first and then the medikits after. Um, but yep, there's another one, so try and just dodge the wolves as best as you can. Take a right here. Now, he hasn't appeared much in this game, if at all, but the Wendigo yell, the Wen Wendigo scream is genuinely quite a frightening one. Uh, so we're going to be taking a right here. Uh, the ice path is going to start going to the right, so that's where we need to go. And we are almost getting there now. This chase scene, because Carl runs for like one and a half seconds, and you think no matter how crappy your lungs are, you'd be running for your absolute life. Uh, we're going to be coming up to the end, but uh, just keep keeping an eye on your health meter. I think there's only going to be one more wolf that appears in front of us that we need to dodge. Yes, boy! Safety coming up, safety coming up. You see the uh, frozen ice man? Press the left bumper to crawl underneath and in between these gaps. And... You are safe from the wolves. It saves here, which is fine. Um, but you are, for the time being, you are safe. But you're still going to want to absolutely just make a break for it. We can't be our standing around. Uh, so just continue on straight, heading down the steps. Again, continue on straight, and you can see a bunch of double gates uh, right in front of us. And we are effectively now at, right at the end of the game. Uh, we are literally going to take a turn. There's going to be one more scene where the Wendigo breaks through some fences. You'd think, you know, for the scream and the whole powerful entity stuff, whatever he's got going on, he'd be a bit quicker and a bit you know, kind of less crappy. Um, but anyway, take an immediate left, jump into the boat, and you should be popping a whole bunch of achievements. This is the end of the game here. So what we should be popping now is pink lungs for not smoking. And that's it. You, do you know what I mean? That was a bit sort of underwhelming. It's like the Wendigo's just like, ah. Okay, so that's the end of that one. See you in uh, Broom, pal. Yeah, because we already done it. Yeah. Anyway, you should get pink lungs for not smoking, prohibition for not drinking a thing. Emery usk admit. I think I said that right for finishing the game. And firearms registry for not shooting any uh, bullets at all throughout the entirety of the game.
the soulful doctor, avenging his fiancée's unjust death by avenging this young woman as though she was his lover. Are these passionate feelings not precisely the kind of feelings that could cause a storm, petrify people deep inside, create monsters? Okay, so once you finally get through the 10 minutes or so of credits and everything like that, we will obviously be put back at the main menu. Still got a couple of achievements that we're going to let uh, going to grab before we do uh, one more playthrough, which should only take about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes anyway, um, without driving a vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and grab the... Um, uh, achievement number 33 and 34. So go ahead, press any button to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green giant. Press play, go on to the last one, and you should start just before we end up getting to the boat. Uh, which, which again, will be the very last scene. Um... And I lied again, sorry. So what we actually have to do, we actually have to run all the way back down until we get to the scene where the Wendigo tries to uh, shoot us. But anyway, get out your flare gun. We can get this achievement out of the way now. Whip out your flare gun, shoot it into the night sky. This wouldn't work in the day. You would have to do it in the night sky. And that is the A Star in the Night achievement. So again, just continue on all the way forward until we get to the point where the Wendigo is ripping the fence. And then we need to swap it out to our rifle and then just try to shoot him once. And that will get that achievement out of the way. The bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yeah, 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 here it is, boy. All right, so just keep shooting him. Doesn't matter what you do now, just keep shooting. Oh, he's pretty fast, though, isn't he? Oh, until he gets close to you and then he... Come on! Come on, stupid achievement guy. Eh? Eh? Oh, finally, there we go. Do we want to see if Carl, how Carl dies from the uh, Wendigo? Absolutely not. So that should now be, if you take a look at your achievement list, that should be 34 out of 34. Please ignore this. Uh, the three uh, is because I actually missed... I actually missed one of the cabins and missed one of the crossbow bolts the first time through. So you should be only have one achievement left, the onwards on foot achievement. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to now completely start a new game. So completely quit out. Go to the main menu again. Now for this one, um, I've I've left in everything. So I've left in all the cutscenes. I've left in all the visions. Um, you know, just so that it, I hope that you can sort of follow along easy. Now, obviously, this playthrough is going to be slower, but luckily, because we don't have to do any of the collectibles and everything again. Obviously, we can just go straight for the main story. Grab a couple of bits, what we need, uh, first aid kit and rifles and stuff like that, and just you know get it done, smash it out. Um, but yeah, so the second playthrough should only take about an hour, an hour and ten. Um, I did read somewhere there was one guy who said he'd done absolutely everything in two hours, which is that. Sorry, that's just impossible. That that didn't happen. Sorry, pal. It, it just didn't. <laughs> it's, it's, you just can't do it. Because even if you tried doing the not uh, walking, uh, not driving in the first playthrough, that would have probably taken about. Pff, Maybe even five, six hours on its own by the time you walk to each location. And you see how long it took, you know, uh, just driving back and forth to, to each location. So, but yeah, so this playthrough, my throat is absolutely constricting. It's dying. I'm on the absolute come down now. I'm burning up. So there is going to be no commentary. Uh, I do apologize for this next 
playthrough, but um, I'll just tell you a couple of things. A couple of things what you should um, know. Obviously, we know how to play the game by now. Um, obviously, when it gets to night time, you can turn the gamma back up. Now, for the walk-in, what I ended up doing, instead of trying to go through the trees, because again, it's very easy to get lost in the trees in the snow, uh, I ended up basically taking a lot of the main roads, so like we were driving in a car. Um, and again, that's more that's more for you guys, so that hopefully you can follow along. If you wanted to use this as like a rough guide, um, so you just sort of know, so you think, right, I need to go to uh, the La Chance house next, for example. And you think, but I can make it quicker by going through the trees, blah, blah, blah. Again, obviously you're more than welcome to do that. That's what we're doing. We're going to be going to each um, of the four frozen dudes. We need to um, get the empty bottle and the sherry, or the beer, because we need that calibou to get the warm coat in order to go to the icy caverns. We need a medikit as well, and we need to get the rifle, which we should. Um, so, yes. Um, but again, completely up to you how you do it. If you just want to follow along, just to make sure that you are not, um, not going to get lost. Again, obviously it's completely up to you, but if you think that you can get to certain places quicker by darting through the trees, again, you are definitely more than welcome to do that. It's literally whatever floats your boat, and if it makes it easier for you, uh, do it. But like I said, for those that do just want to follow along, that's why I ended up sticking a lot with just walking on the main road. Um, obviously for now though, we can just drive. So continue to drive. And it's really until we get to the general store where we can here drive no more. Far from here. The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent man. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses, but the last straw was the reopening of a mine, which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialists have been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target. would become the man himself. Carl needed to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. driver had taken off. It was still best to check it out and leave nothing to chance. Carl needed help. It was a small locked box engraved with the letters WH. Carl thought about taking it. Nothing was to be left to chance. Such heart-wrenching Nordic poetry that was. But Carl didn't care much about flowery language. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Even better than he had hoped, Carl Faubert had succeeded once more and was now on his way to new adventures.
Spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes, the Manistan region was no tourist hub. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. Jean-Luc Bédard had without a doubt been the closest man in the village to William Hamilton, otherwise known as Uncle Willie. The truck was running on fumes. Good thing that the general store was close by. So this is it then, guys. So after we park up into the um, garage here, the garage, the garage, the fuel station, we cannot go into any vehicle at all, whether it's the snowmobile, whether it's this truck, whether it's whatever. We are now walking from absolutely everywhere, so hopefully you do still have an inkling of sort of uh, what to remember, what to do, what to grab. Um, but again, I try, I'll try and go a little bit slower. Uh, I, I have tried to go a little bit slower in this playthrough so that you can hopefully keep up. Um, but again, unfortunately, um, for this one, my throat is literally on the... Bleh. I'm, I'm so sorry, I am done with this one. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this one will go well. Love yous. Maintaining his composure, Carl recalled something from his military training. Wolves always stay away from populated areas. Wait, was it about bears? At long last, the crowbar was within Carl's grasp. Surely it would come in handy at some point.
down to the bottom of the box. The murder weapon. What was that doing there, Carl wondered. Hamilton must have been determined to keep some information secret to post this key. Shame he got unlucky. Everything made sense now. Poor Hamilton's denunciation was interrupted, and he figured it would be best to lock everything up and send the key to his correspondent, who would receive the box later on. Clever, but not enough. That's what happens to ordinary people playing spy. Carl didn't know where to go, but he had to find help, find a way to contact authorities. He had to search the village. Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out. Carl wondered what the hell could that thing be? It looked like a man fossilized in ice. All of a sudden, Carl felt like he was pulled inside a world of dreams. A cold, unknown dimension. Somehow, self-control was slipping from his grasp. What could these engraved numbers mean? A fresh path suddenly appeared before Carl. that feeling you get when you immerse your frozen hands in hot water. What happened? Now at least he knew who the unfortunate man petrified in ice was. Jill Lachance, the general store's manager himself.
It was so cold. Already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, and boiled cauliflower filled the air. Carl held in his hand some awful sugar alcohol, but rather than drink it, he told himself it could be useful. He only had to be wary.
another worrisome victim of this ice, this one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort to hide it. But Carl didn't know how to reach it. Carl hadn't lived up to his good finder reputation. He still hadn't found any of the wealth contained in Lamotte's lands. Carl wondered how long he would have to endure this skin-stinging cold.
Oh, mon bonhomme! Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retentisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt, et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche! <rire> Si tu veux du linge chaud, parce que t'es habillé comme un gars de la vie, je dirais pas non à une bonne bouteille de caribou. Puis tu pigeras ce que tu voudras parmi mes guenilles. <rire> oh, quand on cherche, on trouve. Parce que je t'aime bien, Aster, je vais te dire quelque chose. Tu fais bien de prendre ma pélisse. Parce que par là-bas, tu vas rencontrer le vrai froid. Un froid qui glace comme t'en as jamais connu dans ta vie. <rire> Ça ouvre la pentille. Prends là, je m'en fous. Perds ton temps dans mes déchets, tu rapportes du caribou. Not too shabby. Carl felt he needed to protect himself. Health is what mattered most, and the old man's coat made sure of that. However, Carl still felt that he would miss out on precious knowledge if he left this place.
cold seemed to be more brutal here than anywhere else. It seeped into bones and into every breath to get to the heart until it stopped. Carl needed to be dressed in warm clothes to survive. Luckily, he had the coat to protect him from the biting cold. Another instance of this magic ice. What was this one doing, lying on the ground, so afraid? The plot thickened like water into ice. A sudden cold snap struck Carl, who felt like he was pulled into a dream. He had been running in fear from something creeping towards him, against which he couldn't do anything, only to end up like this, petrified and cold. It seemed as though Régin had been ready to take up arms and slay people like Hamilton. Could he have committed murder for his cause? Who could have gotten killed in front of his very eyes? suddenly felt to observe. He was worried about a presence around him. No stone can withstand a force of dynamite.
Right, what I should actually say, um, not, not, not nothing to do with the doctor's clinic or anything here, <clears throat> sorry. Always make sure you've got at least three or four logs on you, and that is purely for the last campfire that we're going to go to um, towards the end of the game. Um, because I, actually, I accidentally didn't, and I just about made it, even though I almost froze to death. So... Definitely always worth, if you can, because there's some logs outside Dr. Burpee's office here. Make sure to have at least a four, you know, just try and grab the full five logs in your inventory. Because we're not going for many campfires, but make sure you've at least got three, four or five in your inventory, just in case. Keep picking up the logs where you can. There was no doubt that the doctor and Hamilton knew each other very well. The good doctor flanked by his beautiful spouse. Pure happiness captured on cardstock. Carl recognized this woman's soulful eyes. Was it Dr. Beaupre who had hit him head on at the village border? Great care had to be taken searching this place full of oddities. Everything was important. The decor itself told a story. Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out.
air was freezing right down to the bone. The otherworldly ice had struck again. The woman's hopes and dreams were frozen in eternity. Something was hidden under the stairs. The man grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. Perhaps their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. The vision's veil was lifted and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out.
Carl knew why he was suddenly shivering. He was going back to the realm of visions. Carl had no issue recognizing the spirit-like figures, but he couldn't figure out what they wanted from him. The phantom, freed of reality's shackles, vanished in the forest. Earlier, Carl had witnessed a tragedy that befell it. Another phantom disappeared in the wilderness. Carl had seen what happened to it, too. A third phantom gently faded away. Carl noticed that as the cursed villagers finally left reality, he could feel a sense of unburdening exuding from them in an almost intimate way. The last phantom, lost in solitude up until now, joined the others in the forest's darkness, free at last to enjoy an eternal, well-deserved slumber. Carl was only beginning to understand the horror which had struck his village. He understood that the dead were piling up and that he couldn't help them by himself. The road was clear for him. He needed to push further north and fast to find help. Another diary. Carl felt like someone was trying to communicate with him. Or was it simply the result of happenstance? The Polaroid, Carl's long-standing and faithful ally, had seen a share of husbands caught red-handed cheating. There's always something out there waiting to be snapped away. Carl had found what he was looking for. He needed to get back on the road. Hello again, it's just another fair warning. Make sure if you haven't got any logs, make sure right now you got some, we got some right in front of us. Make sure to pick up another three, four, or just chuck five in your inventory. Make sure to do it because the very last campfire that I'm going to go to, I didn't have any logs and I almost froze to death, as I said earlier. So again, make sure that you've got a couple of fire starters, at least one fire starter, a match, and a log on you.
It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. can't be started with a snap of the fingers. So you see? You see how stupid I was? Uh, so yeah, this was literally just a case of, oh my god, I don't want to uh, reload a last autosave, which was bloody ages ago. So I decided to just go for it. Um, now, at this point, I think I'm about half. I think it was about half my coldness. Um, so I didn't actually know if I was going to make it. But I actually end up... I did end up just about doing it. So, um, yeah. But that's why I said twice there about to having as many logs as you can. So at least you can warm up. There would be an autosave. And you wouldn't have any more worries. Uh, but we are now just coming up to the last vision. Before the chase scene begins again. Only this time, we can... Use the rifle, which makes getting rid of the world a lot easier. A young woman. It looked like a simple hunting accident. There was Hamilton. Carl recognized him. A major hunting accident. The doctor examined the young woman. But death couldn't be overturned. She was dead. was not the type of body you buried in a big ceremony in the village graveyard. It had to be hidden. No one could know about this. The best way to do that was to have a simple-minded man bury the poor girl. Lamotte, the mechanic. The doctor denied the unfair death of the young woman, but Hamilton had him in his grip. Hamilton knew all of the poet's secrets and wouldn't hesitate to reveal them. I know all about your crimes, you little communist. You know mine. What a sordid affair.
Carl understood the ins and outs of the affair. A woman had been killed in an unfair accident, and a young warrior had damned himself to avenge her. The one responsible had already been killed, and so the beast could not quench its thirst for vengeance. And now, recklessly, Carl had pulled the bolt from the beast's heart. A beast who was but a young free man lost without his fiancée, and who had out... So yes, let us equip the Lee Enfield rifle this time. Now again, I think there are around 10 wolves. Now what you need to do um, you can't shoot it. That you can't shoot a wolf from far away because it just won't. Um, it, it just won't hit them. So you need to wait until you're up close and personal. So you're gonna see here. I'm gonna miss. Oh, in fact, no, not with that one. Uh, but with yeah, one or two of them, I end up missing because I'm too far away. So you need to be quite close to the wolves in order to actually hit them and shoot them dead. Cold turned into pain. Carl needed to find someplace warm. vehicle stuff is playthrough is done so jump straight onto the boat and that should get you the onwards on foot achievement and that should then be 35 out of 35 achievements so thank you so so much for watching guys and gals i really hope you enjoyed the uh, game and i hope the guide helped as well if it did of course don't forget to like comment subscribe and share with a friend as well a big shout out as always to all my patreon supporters youtube men uh, youtube members 
anyone who interacts with me, uh, with me on the daily and whoever even gives me just one-off little support payments. It's really, really, really appreciated. Um, also, check out my true crime, true crime gaming podcast called Gaming's Darker Side. I think you'll like it. Uh, but thank you so much again, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next Game Pass game. Big old love nuts.